miles away from the Mercedes plant and still have not uh, seen what I would, you know, call any damage. And power lines uh, don't seem to be down. Power seems to be on in most locations here. So, right, so I'm he, not he, sure that he, we he, had anything. Here's your project now is to take that road from Coaling down to Duncanville. Uh, and you've got, a nav you've got a navigator in there. I'm very curious to see what it looks like in the community of Coaling. And then uh, right. th there's a road that runs down to Duncanville on US 82. And uh, we are quite, quite curious to see what type of damage that we have there. Because we do know that there have been confirmed reports of damage via emergency management and the public uh, in terms of structural James, damage. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure of the intersection, but we have uh, four police cars here. I'm not sure that we're going to be allowed to go down that road. We're at the intersection of Hagler Polling Road. And yeah, that, that's it. That's it. That, that's what you you want to go down that road. Just tell tell them who you are, Brian. You're a big you're a big deal. Oh yeah, right. Well, we'll we'll see. <laughs> okay. And again, if look if they if they if they don't want us down there, we understand that. Uh, but if, if they will yeah. allow us that, it would help people because a lot of people are asking. So I know exactly where you are. But uh, the the Colling Hagler Road is where we've got a lot of damage down and through there. But let's go back to me full screen if we can. I want to go full screen with Max 1. Uh, and again, what you're looking at, we've got a line of severe storms now. This is on top of Smith Lake. Uh, again, West Point, Battleground, Jones Chapel, uh, down to Arley, almost into downtown Jasper, then down to Oakland. Within this line segment, there could be some strong straight line winds, possibly enough to knock down trees and power lines. There are severe thunderstorm warnings in effect for parts of Winston, Walker, and Cullman counties for the possibility of strong straight line winds. No tornado warning, but a severe thunderstorm warning. So let's go down to our Perry County storm. We have a severe storm in progress in the eastern part of Perry County. And again, this is where we have the possibility of a tornado that is now northeast of the community of Sprott. That's Alabama 14 that kind of makes a dog leg right there. That's uh, Again, 183 that runs over here to um, US 82. That's Alabama Highway 219 right here. And that's the possible tornado that is coming up on, uh, on Bibb County. It'll be very interesting to see um, if the Weather Service decides to extend this warning up into Bibb. And what we're going to do here is take a little closer look at the velocity display on this and see what it looks like. It, it looks pretty know, ragged to me. Let's take WEX05 real quick. This is going to be the same storm. And again, there, there is rotation here. There's no doubt about that. And again, it's a valid tornado warning, but it's not as tight as it was earlier. And this is the Bibb County line right here. This is Perry County and this is Bibb County. And we'll see if this tornadic circulation wants to cross over into Bibb. It's still there. It, it's, uh, it's there, but it's not the most impressive circulation that we have seen. But again, the Weather Service will have a decision to make here soon. Um, about that uh, storm. Again, getting a lot of reports of the, down in the Hagler Coaling Road. And Brian and Megan are down in through there. In fact, let's, let's bring them up real quick. Let's take their feet. Brian, are you able to get down through there? We're, we are. Uh Still have not found anything in the way of uh, damage. We've seen a little bit. You know how when you get 35, 40 mile an hour winds, you get small debris on the highway, uh, right. like leaves and stuff, and you know the ends of twigs. We've seen a little bit of that, but not much. And the power is still on. That's what's uh, kind of amazing, because uh, I would have expected uh, if we had much in the way of tornado damage that the power would be out, but the power is still on here. Right, and what you want to do is keep going all the way down toward Duncanville. Yep. And, uh, I'm, and that's uh, the plan, that's what we're doing. Right, and you're going to have, uh, th there's clearly some damage and trees down and structural damage down through there. So when you see something, just let us know, Brian. We'll kind of keep an eye on your stream. Let's go back to me and Max 1 behind me. It is uh, 3.06. This is a uh, Sunday morning severe weather event. James Spann with the entire weather team. Charles here in the station. We have Brian and Megan out in the field. Uh, this is a possible tornadic circulation that is in the far northern part of Perry County, about to cross over into Bibb County. This is Highway 219 running south out of Brent and Centerville. This is US 82 running down into Chilton County. And um, again, let's go back to WEX 05 really quickly. And uh, which, Sid, if you can kill Brian's audio real quick, that'd be great because we're going to bring him in in just a second. Thank you. Uh, it's still there, but it's not an overwhelming signature, but still it's enough to keep the warning in progress. Next, Charles, the Weather Service has to make that wonderful decision. And what I was going to say earlier, yeah. 
You don't want to false alarm people. You do not want a high false alarm ratio. If you keep issuing warnings when there's nothing there, it's cry wolf. And people will say in the research studies, I hear warnings all the time and nothing ever happens. At one point, the false alarm ratio here was 83%. The Weather Service has done an amazing job of getting that sucker down in the 30s. I never thought it would we'd be that good or they would be that good, but they are. So warnings mean something, but they're not just going to hit that button every time they see some type of mesocyclone on radar. That doesn't necessarily mean there's a tornado there. So again, they will have a decision to make, and they have done a marvelous job of keeping the finger off that button and not issuing warnings that don't need to be in effect, if that makes any sense. We, we have to lower the FAR, the false alarm ratio, while keeping the POD very high. That's probability of detection. And they have done a really good job with that. So, again, in a minute, we'll see what they do with this uh, storm as it crosses over into uh, Bibb County. Let's go back to Max 1. And, again, you can see the uh, storm looking awfully ragged. It's just a very noisy, messy pattern with reflectivity this morning. You're not going to see much by looking at this. Uh, in fact, let's pull this back out. Let's kind of do a reset real quick uh, while we have a second. The, uh, and let me just say this. The... Uh, Let's put the watch up here. I think we've got some more counties cleared. Yep. Yeah, Tuscaloosa County, you're clear. Tuscaloosa County, go to sleep. You're done. Severe weather threat is over. Fayette County, Marion, Lamar, Pickens, Green, Hale, Marengo, Sumter. If you're in those counties, the risk of severe weather is over. That's it. You're done. This thing is ending ahead of schedule, Charles. We talked about this, you know, last yeah. night. Yeah. We don't think it's going to run as late as we thought. We had some concern this might run into church service time. Uh, but if there's any good thing that happened with that, I think we made a lot of churches think about getting a warning and having a plan. That's a really good thing. Uh, but again, we've still got a tornado watch for about the eastern half of the state from uh, Smith Lake, Jasper, Birmingham, Brent, Marion, east over to the Georgia state line. Everybody's under a wind advisory, by the way. That's the reason these counties are in that shade of brown over here. So when we've got severe thunderstorm warnings in effect for parts of Walker, Winston, Cullman counties, the one tornado warning, it's that one right there for the northeastern part of Perry County down in central Alabama. Uh, so that's the current big picture. Let's go back to Brian and Megan. Brian, uh, tell us what you got. Any changes in your journey down through there? Uh, no changes so far, James. Uh, you know, there, there's been a lot of very heavy rain. We're not seeing any flash flooding, though. Uh, there are uh, spots where water's on the highway, and that, you know, causes a little bit of driving concerns. Uh, but so far, we have not seen any significant damage of, of any sort, really. And the power is still on out here, too. All right, let's go to Cullman County. We have a tornado warning now for yeah, Cullman County. Warning. <clears throat> this is a uh, brand-new tornado warning for Cullman County. And here's your polygon. This will include the city of Cullman, Vinemont, Jones Chapel, Crane Hill, West Point. This includes uh, communities up uh, Alabama Highway 69, uh, places uh, up toward Joppa, Baileyton. So we've got a tornado warning now for Cullman County. Let's take a look at the reflectivity first. We've got a line of storms coming in, there's no doubt about that. But there is evidence that perhaps a tornado in this region here on the eastern shore of Smith Lake moving to the northeast. So again, this does include the city of Cullman. That's Interstate 65. This is U.S. Highway 31. And that's moving to the northeast. So that is a new tornado warning in effect for Cullman County. And uh, I'll give you a couple of looks at that. Let's go to WEX 05 really quickly. And if you're in the polygon, you need to do something about it. You know the deal. Small room, lowest floor, near the center, and away from windows. Uh, this is a possible tornadic circulation on the eastern shore of Smith Lake. And again, this is the look as we see it from the uh, Birmingham radar, which is awfully noisy. We're going to change it over to the uh, high top radar. And that's not the most impressive look in the world. But again, the Weather Service believes there's enough evidence there to prompt a tornado warning here. So again, let's go back to Max 1, and we've got the polygon outlined here clearly. So if you're in any of these places, in that polygon, you need to be in a safe place. Again, up Highway 69, you got Simcoe back over toward Baileyton. You need to be in a safe place. Up Highway 31, I-65, Vinemont, you need to be in a safe place. Out U.S. Highway 278 toward Jones Chapel, you need to be sheltered. Crane Hill. Now, Good Hope proper is just outside the polygon. 
Uh, and again, Wealthy, Holly Pond, you're not in the Polygon. Hansville, no. Dodge City, no. Colony, no. Uh, you're south of the Polygon. The Polygon is basically from Coleman North. And uh, it's for the possibility of a spin-up tornado in this part of this line segment moving northeast. And uh, it's moving northeast at about 50 miles per hour. These things are racing along, and this will affect the northern part of Coleman County uh, and also a small part of Morgan County. Uh, Eva is in Morgan County right across the line. Eva's located right here. So this is a new tornado warning in effect for the northern part of Coleman County. And again, uh, we'll keep a close eye on things up here. And Charles, uh, just when you thought we might not have a warning up north, we got a warning up north. Yeah, you knew it happened. Uh, we can't get out uh, that easy. Uh, the good news is they've canceled the Perry County uh, warning, which is good. But uh, yeah, with this one, we'll, we'll watch this one until um, I believe 345. So the new warning there anywhere along 278, Jones Chapel, Crane Hill, that uh, north side of Smith Lake. You guys need to get to that safe place immediately. Uh, go ahead and get to your safe place. On the lowest level of your home, put as many walls between you and the exterior as possible. We say that all the time. Make sure you, if you got a helmet, a bicycle helmet, baseball helmet, a uh, softball helmet, whatever you got, motorcycle helmet, put that on and get to that safe place. And uh, we will let you know when you have the all clear. We're getting some very heavy rain, some gusty winds with this line. Uh, certainly some signs of rotation there. Uh, the Weather Service choosing to issue the warning because of that. Uh, but the severe thunderstorm warning can... Uh, is producing some very heavy rain back to the south uh, all the way down into uh, Walker County as well. But it looks like that's beginning to weaken in that spot. So uh, again, this warning is until 345 current time now 313. Be in that safe place and we will give you the all clear when it's time. Uh, but uh, this storm's moving very quickly at about 50 miles an hour and these storms have really been uh, screaming along. And one thing I noticed about this one, a lot of the storms we've seen today and we've had uh, more of a, a south to north uh, configuration on these warnings, or at least southeast to northeast, or southwest to northeast. This one's actually one of the few that we've had more of a, a west to east movement uh, that we've seen all night tonight. That's typically what we see this um, with severe storms around here. Uh, but with the motion of the southerly winds and the storms that were just kind of blasting through, uh, they were more in a north-south orientation so uh, we'll watch this one very closely again. Jones Chapel, Crane Hill, you need to be in your safe place now. West Point, you've got a few minutes. Uh, if you are in the city of Coleman, even I would say north side of Good Hope, Vinemont, you need to go ahead and start working your way to that safe place now, and we will give you the all clear when it's time. But uh, I still think we've got a long way to go uh, tonight. Uh, still a long ways. The, the tornado watches until 9 a.m. I don't think we quite make it that far. Uh, but I definitely think we've got another couple of hours uh, for these storms tonight, James. All right, uh, so it's now 315. And uh, this is James Spann with Charles Daniel and the ABC 3340 Weather Center. That, and let me let's again point out the tornado warning in Perry County was canceled. So the warning will not be extended up into Bibb. So the only tornado warning in the state we're working right now, it's this one. And that's the reason we're focused on this one. So again, if you're in Bibb County, that warning for Perry was canceled. The, the circulation is greatly weakened. Speaking of that, uh, you know, I'll, I'll shoot straight with you. That's not exactly a tornado signature here. Let's take a look at WEX 05, another look at this. And again, that's not exactly a tornado signature, maybe some circulation in through here. So, but, but again, the Weather Service, Huntsville issues these warnings for Coleman County. And, and that's a whole complicated story. If you're in Coleman County, you're in the Birmingham television market. You should be watching us. That's the reason we're doing this. Uh, but the warnings come out of the Weather Service in Huntsville, which has nothing to do with the television markets. It has created mass confusion, but you should be watching us. But again, Huntsville sees something in here they don't like, and they've issued that warning. Let's go back to Max 1. And again, we're kind of bouncing back between the two sources here. And there could be some strong winds, no doubt about that. Yeah. There could be some winds, maybe enough to, high enough to knock down some trees and power lines, but that's not really a classic tornado look. I, I can't give you a, a pinpoint location of a possible tornado there, but... Uh, maybe uh, something along the apex of that bow, I don't know. Yeah, you know, it's kind of a bowed out echo, and typically that represents more strong straight line winds than a, a tornadic type situation. But whatever, respect the polygon. That's what you need to do. So again, uh, and this does include the city of Cullman. Uh, and this includes southern Morgan County up toward Eva uh, and Faulkville. Uh, this includes 
uh, Alabama Highway 157. This is going up toward uh, West Point and Battleground, US 278 out toward Jones Chapel. Uh, Good Hope around, to me, Good Hope is where this high school is located. You're just outside the Polygon down here. Uh, Welty, Hantsville, Holly Pond, you're not in the Polygon. Understand tornado warnings are not issued for entire counties. They're issued for parts of counties. Tornadoes are small. Counties are big. There's not a need to issue a warning for an entire county. But again, uh, I'd say there's a chance we could see some strong winds for sure coming uh, right down Highway 278, ultimately affecting 157, 31, and 65, and then ultimately Highway 69, Simcoe back up toward Baileyton and Joppa and Arab. So this is a tornado warning in effect for the northern part of Cullman County. Let's see if we can get Brian back on the line. Is Brian, Brian, are you still with me uh, on the line? I think we've lost Brian. Uh, yeah, th they are in an area where there's been tornado damage down around Hagler and Coling and Duncanville. And uh, we know that, uh, we understand that there's been damage at a trailer park. And, and we have heard of some structural damage and roads are impassable because of downed trees down there. And inevitably, when you've got a situation like that, you're not going to be able to get a cell signal out. And so again, uh, Brian and Megan Thomas are down in that tornado damaged area. This is in far southeast Tuscaloosa County. And as soon as they can safely get the uh, video and information back to us, uh, they'll do that. But again, sometimes we lose track and lose communication with them because of uh, uh, cellular coverage. In fact, I see their video now, uh, but again, it's, it's continuing to freeze. But we're gonna stay with this because we have a tornado warning. The, the one thing we've always tried to do here Whenever there's tornado damage, the easiest thing to do is to go to the tornado damage. It's a very compelling video, but when you've got life-threatening weather, you just can't do that. We have to stay with weather coverage. And the reason we're still on this, we have a tornado warning in effect for the northern part of Cullman County. And we're going to stay with this as long as we have tornado warnings in effect. And again, uh, we obviously encourage no travel from the Good Hope exit. That's Alabama 69 North up to Falkville, the Falkville exit on Interstate 65. So if you're listening to us via an app or a radio station or something like that, we encourage no travel along Interstate 65 from Good Hope, that's 69 North, up to the Falkville exit in Morgan County. James, they've got damage. Uh, Brian and... I don't know if you guys can uh, yeah, hear let's... us. They see us. Hey, can you, can you hear us, Brian? Yes, uh, we yeah, just got in. We just got in, yes. Right, and let's double box it. I want to double box. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. We're going to, Coleman County is going to be in this one. And Brian, y all, y all, what do you got down there? Uh, we're at, uh, at, at Hagler. We're, we're very close to US 82 on Hagler Coling Road. And at this moment, uh, the road appears to be blocked. Uh, we have a number of uh, emergency vehicles, as you can see here, Sheriff's Department. And uh, we passed a, a fire truck vehicle going the other way. Um, I, I thought the road was blocked, but the sheriff's car just went through there. So I'm assuming we're going to be able to get through here in just a second and may be able to give you more information. Uh, as we were getting to this particular point, uh, we basically saw a bunch of, uh, you know, small things in the road, but not anything uh, major, although I'm seeing what appears to be a tree down uh, to my right. Uh, and I don't know how far we're going to get here because apparently they're... I guess we can try and go ask them real quick. Yeah. Uh, so it looks like uh, there is some damage in this area. Uh, it doesn't look particularly severe at this moment, but uh, it's hard, you know, hard to tell for sure. Okay. Uh, well, again, Brian, you be safe. And if you can get, we've heard reports a trailer park has been hit down there. And uh, okay. there's been a lot of damage. So if you, you take it safe and, and do whatever you need to do, but if you get information, let us know. We'll take you live. Uh, Y'all can take that uh, camera off the dash and, and it'll take it with you. So if you need to walk on foot, but uh, let's go back full screen again. We're going to stay with the Coleman County situation here. That's Brian Peters and Megan Thomas that is down near Duncanville. They, they took the road from Coling down to Duncanville and down in that zone, there's been a lot of damage. And again, we'll get some additional information from them as, as uh, we know more. But uh, we've got a line of strong storms that's approaching the city of Coleman. Let's look at the reflectivity. That's the velocity. And again, I'll be. Uh, honest with you, that's not really a tornado signature, but again, you've got a line of heavy storms that the main threat seems to be from strong straight line winds yeah. that could easily happen. And again, what does it matter? 
If it's a tornado or straight line winds, if a tree is going to come through your house, you just need to know about it and you need to be sheltered. So again, we encourage everybody in advance of this line of storms along the I-65 US-31 corridor to be in a safe place. That would include the city of Cullman, the city of Vinemont, people in West Point. It's really come on through Jones Chapel. It's coming into West Point right now. It's going to be in Cullman here in about 10 minutes or so. And, uh, and then ultimately, the wind damage potential will be shifting east of Cullman up uh, Highway 69, uh, again toward uh, Baileyton and Joppa. So uh, that's the situation there, Charles. And uh, uh, again, I don't see much to support a tornado here from anything. But the, yeah, the damaging I've, wind potential is still probably pretty high here. Right. And I've, I've looked at high top radar. I've looked at ours. I've looked at Columbus. And I, and I don't see it. I see I have a bow, like you said. Uh, probably more uh, damaging straight line winds. I don't know if there was something that uh, just piqued their interest as it as it crossed from uh, really Winston into Coleman County. Uh, the Weather Service in Huntsville pulled the trigger here. And again, I, I really think anywhere along here we see some good straight line winds headed towards Coleman, Vinemont, and that'll affect Good Hope too. Uh, but um, it, it's interesting. I don't see any good tight circulation that's showing up. So uh, just keeping an eye on it. The warning uh, is until 345. So we've got some time for this one to continue. Um, if you're in Coleman and you're watching us, just go ahead and get to that safe place. Go through your plan of action and, and get to that safe place. And we'll give you the all clear when it when it uh, has passed by. Uh, Let's so double box uh, Charles and me and, and the damage. Yeah. We'll put the damage in one box. Uh, this is coming from uh, Megan Thomas and Brian Peters, and they are down in the Duncanville Hagler area of southeast Tuscaloosa County, where we've got trees blocking the road. And again, we are on a tornado warning for Coleman County, and I, I'm pretty much going to stay with this, but I wanted you to be able to see both of those for just a second. Uh, let's go back to this full screen. We're going to do max one full screen. We'll, we'll do a double box here in just a second, but again, this is US 31, Interstate 65. That's the Lake on Hill right here coming down toward the Morgan County line. And that line of storms will be crossing the Interstate 65 corridor pretty soon. I wouldn't want to be on Interstate 65, tornado or no tornado, from the Good Hope exit, that's 69 north, all the way up to Falkville. And uh, the same thing for 278. And obviously, people in Coleman need to be sheltered. That's a small room, lowest floor, near the center, no windows. No mobile homes, no cars. And in your safe place, you need to be wearing a helmet. They canceled it. Okay, yeah, good. I, they, I, you know, um, it's just hard to come up with something when there's nothing there. So yeah, that, um, that's good news. Yeah, so the tornado warning has been canceled now for, uh, for Coleman County. So I, I don't think we have an active warning in the state right now. How about that? So when's the last time that happened? About 10.30. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't see. Yeah, that's good news. That is wow. good news. Wow. So let's, let's stay with the big picture for just a minute. So again, if you're in Coleman County, the tornado warning has been canceled. Understand there's a line of strong storms coming in here that could produce strong straight line winds, you are under a severe thunderstorm warning. Understand that. But the tornado warning has been canceled. There's just nothing there. There's, there's no reason for a tornado warning. So you could see some strong straight line winds. You want to stay sheltered? Not a bad thing to do until the storms pass. Uh, heavier storms coming up into the Birmingham metro. They are not severe. They're going to be noisy. It's going to be gusty. You'll hear some thunder. You'll see some lightning. And you think, what's going on here? Well, but there's nothing severe. To be severe, you need one inch diameter hail or 58 mile per hour winds or greater. We don't have that right now. And again, if you're in Tuscaloosa, the risk of severe weather has ended. How about that? In fact, uh, the tornado watch has been canceled for that western side of the state. The risk of severe weather is over. But again, for Birmingham and points east, we still have a tornado watch in effect. And we'll watch these storms, heavy storms now from the western part of the Birmingham Metro down into parts of Bibb and Perry counties. And in terms of warnings, there's a severe thunderstorm warning for a pretty good chunk of Coleman County with the possibility of strong straight line winds. But uh, other than that, we don't have any tornado warnings. Now, 
For the eastern side of the state, the storms progress onto the east. If you're in Anniston or Gadsden, you'll see these things around 5, 530 this morning, 6 o'clock, but they will be exiting the state pretty quickly. They're, the storms are ahead of schedule. Uh, most of the models earlier in the week suggested they might linger until noon or 1 o'clock on the eastern side of the state, but now it looks like they're going to be long gone by maybe 5 or 6 o'clock, which really reduces any threat to churches this morning. You know, it's Palm Sunday morning. There was some great concern about big attendance and people and churches, but it looks like the worst of the weather is going to be long gone by the time most of the services begin later this morning, which is which is great news. But again, in a way, it's good because I think a lot of churches started to think about ways of getting warnings and having a plan. And what do you do with people that are, you know, in the sanctuary? We have a tornado warning. What do you do? I think a lot of plans have come out of this, which is a good thing. So uh, again, uh, let's uh, tell you what, let's uh, go to Megan and Charles if we can. Brian. Because we have no right. tornado warnings. Uh, so guys, we, we're free of tornado warnings now, so we can actually talk to you guys for a minute. What, what type of damage have you seen? So I went and talked to the sheriff that was uh, standing underneath all the damage, and he basically said that this is the major road all the way through 82 where it was hit, where we thought. Um, and so he said, there's several trees and power lines down, so we are going to go all the way to 82 to get some of the, um, to see if, if anything else has happened. But this looks like the spot that we were in has been hit the most, is what he said. And it was basically one very large tree. What it's about the reports the of a tra trailer park? Have you guys confirmed that at all, and any word on that? No. No. When I brought that up to the sheriff's department, he did not, uh, he did not know. We've got a new warning for Perry County. Just okay. throwing that out there. Uh, Perry County's down in the Montgomery yeah, market. We'll yeah. hit that in just a second. So, so again, Brian and Megan, tell us exactly where you are so people will have an idea. We're on ha uh, Hagler Coling Road coming up on 82. And uh, uh, so far, we uh, Megan talked to the Sheriff's Department people that uh, were there because the, the tree is over the road. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> and uh, the, the it has brought down power lines and other lines that are right there. Uh, so we haven't reached 82 yet, but I see see a stop sign coming up. So we're probably coming up on 82. And uh, they didn't know anything about a mobile home park, so we can't confirm that. Okay, good. And that's why you're out there. To, to, you know, you hear a lot of things and you see a lot of things. And understand that there could be damage at a place we don't know about right now. This is the middle of the night here, and it's very hard getting information, but is that, is that US 82 right there? Yes, it yes. is, and we're going to go right towards Duncanville. Okay. Uh, so, again, that's uh, Brian Peters and Megan Thomas. Let's go back to Max 1. Let's show this new tornado warning that's in effect for, uh, looks like, northeastern Perry County. So let me uh, take a look and see what we've got here. Uh, yeah, this is uh, what it looks like on the high-resolution radar. And again, that's Highway 219 coming south out of Centerville, coming down toward uh, Selma. And that's Alabama Highway 183 right there that goes back over to US 82. And this is a small part of northeastern Perry County. And uh, this is a tornado warning that is in effect until 4 a.m. And I noticed the Weather Service says a confirmed tornado. Hmm. Not so sure if that's based on a visual report or not. In fact, I'll throw on the correlation coefficient real quick and take a look at that. And yeah, there, there's a little spot right there, and that might be what they're talking about. But again, this is in a rural part of northeastern Perry County. And again, this is in the Montgomery television market. But remember, this is uh, we've decided not to show the Ginzu knife or pocket fisherman commercials this morning, Charles. Uh, I would love to have a pocket fisherman. I mean, those things look awesome. You know, you, you come across a lake and you just pull that thing out of your pocket and you can <laughs> cast a line out there. I mean, one of the greatest inventions ever. But um, uh, since we don't have primetime programming, we, we can be a little lenient in what we cover. So let's go back to Max 1, and uh, this will show that part of Perry County. Again, this is Highway 183 that goes over to US 82. That's Alabama Highway 219. It goes up to Centerville, and in this region, there's the possibility of what could be a, a tornado, and we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, the, the air is still very ripe and juicy and unstable. You, if you 
are east of these storms. If you walk outside, you feel it. The dew points are up in the 60s. Temperatures are up in the 70s here on April the 14th, and, and conditions are very favorable. But there's a lot of, you know, this is not a clean convective pattern here. There's been a lot of disruption of the inflow this morning from storms all around, and so we've not had in our state any, you know, violent long track type tornadoes. Um, and let me just say this, we have had very bad damage in northeastern Mississippi, in case you missed it, in Monroe County, Mississippi, in the community of Hamilton, not Alabama, Hamilton, Mississippi, which is near Aberdeen. There's been a lot of bad damage. Five people were killed at least. Many are missing. There's entrapments. Uh, it's bad. And they're in the process of trying to help people now. And that's a really nasty situation there. That, that was a signature we saw on radar about 11 o'clock last night, and you knew from looking at it there was a debris ball. There was, every, everything was in place, and you knew that it was just awfully bad. Yeah, a little bitty spot right there. That's correlation coefficient. That's evidence of debris being lofted, and that's the reason the Weather Service says this is a confirmed tornado. Uh, so again, that's 219 going up towards Centerville Brent. That's 183 going over to 82. And uh, we'll see if the Weather Service decides to continue this into Bibb County. Yeah, we shouldn't have said there was no warning in effect. <laughs> no. I mean, the minute you say that, you know, a new <laughs> warning is coming out. Um, the tornado is uh, moving northeast at 50. The warning is in effect until 4. It's going to be way out of Perry County by 4 o'clock. It's moving at 50 miles an hour. And again, the uh, Weather Service will see if they decide to issue a warning for parts of Bib. And let's see here. I, I'm telling you, we're, we're blessed, Charles, by the lack yeah. of reports. I mean, normally we're just inundated with damage reports on a night like this, but it's, it's, most of the damage has been clustered down there where Brian and Megan are located, and they came through, uh, you know, Hagler Coaling Road without a lot of these the trees down, but uh, they didn't see any real structural damage in through there. Yeah, and that's good news. I tell you, that thing that, that thing kind of lifted, I think, right before it got to the Mercedes plant. Uh, that could have been could have been way, way worse. Hey. Um, go, so. go, Brian. James and Charles, can you hear me? Go. Yeah, yeah go. Yeah, we're on US 82 now. We just spoke with a sheriff's officer. Uh, I'll be honest with you, James. What I think I just saw is primarily straight-line wind damage. Really? Yes. Uh, you know, there was one large, very large tree, and there's a lot of uh, little debris um, and, of course, power is out because the tree took down uh, power lines. Uh, but uh, there was no what I would call – now, remember, it's dark, okay? So i gotta got to say my visibility is not all that great. But what I saw does not strike me as being a d distinct tornado path. It looks to me more like straight-line wind damage. And that's, very, that's a very distinct possibility. Uh, but, you know, that's interesting, Brian. Right. This is a very interesting case study because that correlation coefficient TDS was remarkably vivid. Yes, and, and I uh, expected to see something much more distinct than what we just saw, but we have basically crossed it, and the, uh, the damage at a mobile home park, the uh, sheriff's officer gave us an address uh, but it's well north of where we are right now. It's, it's right, we got a tornado warning for parts of Bibb. So uh, hang yeah. on, Brian. Let's okay. go back to Max yeah. One. Gotcha. And uh, let's um, let's take off the data and let's just show people who's in the polygon. So this is an extension of the warning that's in effect for northeastern Perry. This is going to be in effect for parts of eastern Bibb. All right. So again, in terms of the big population centers, this is Brent, and this is Centerville. That's the Cahaba River right there. So you're not in it. Once again, Centerville and Brent not in this polygon. A lot of the older legacy systems sound countywide, but there is no need for you to do anything. If you're in Centerville, Brent, you're not in this tornado warning polygon. And we should mention that, uh, let's see, that is a severe thunderstorm warning, it looks like. Well, anyway, let's, let's worry about the tornado warning polygon. This mm -hmm. is US 82 coming east, southeast, out of Brent Centerville. You're in the polygon here. Uh, and again, Highway 1, let's see where Randolph is, Charles. Let's go up north a little bit, and uh, uh, let's zoom in just a little bit. This is Ashby, and this is Oakley. Let's zoom in down here. Keep going down to the south. Let's take a look at uh, Randolph. Yeah, that's right on the edge. 
That's Highway 139. So if you're in Randolph, let's say technically you're in this polygon. But so this is for areas east and southeast of Centerville and Brent in Bibb County. So this is a new tornado warning. The tornado warning for Bibb County in effect until 415 a.m. 415 a.m. Basically from Randolph north. So nobody should be on US 82 between Brent and the Chilton County line. Nobody should be on Highway 139 uh, between the Chilton County line and the Bibb County line up north. Uh, so let's go to the radar display. And again, uh, what I'm going to do is kind of pull up mine over here, which is showing the velocity display in just a second. And again, uh, this had a TDS with it, Charles, uh, when it was back in uh, yeah. Uh, Perry County, and again, we're, we're looking at uh, the data here. In fact, uh, let's go back to Max 1 for just a second. And uh, let's put on correlation coefficient. And let's look for that little negative spot, which would be... We're That's looking at, the one that we saw before, right? Yeah. Hmm. Maybe a new scan. It'll move. We'll see. And now let's go back to um, WEX 05. This is going to be the velocity display. And this is a little noisy, but again, in that the fact that there was a debris signature there, the Weather Service thinks the best course of action is to go ahead and warn for eastern Bibb County, and that's probably a good call. So uh, there's a rotating storm possibly producing a tornado coming up on US 82 east of Centerville. Again, Centerville Brent right here. You're not in the polygon. Uh, this is going to be coming up over the eastern part of Bibb County in the general direction of Montevallo and Shelby County if it holds together. These have not been long track tornadoes, these long lasting storms. They've typically lasted for maybe uh, 15 minutes and they're gone. That's the history of these things this morning. Um, so let's go back to the correlation coefficient product while we have this up here and take a look. And it's pretty noisy down there. I, I'd, I'm not so sure we have a tornado debris signature with this. Uh, that's uh, basically noise. So let's go back to uh, Max 1. And again, this is, I think, what they were looking at right back down in through back. here. Yeah. Uh, but again, I think on the newest scan that we're about to see, which that might be the newest scan. It's, it, so it's still there, at least on this display. But let's go back to reflectivity and kind of expand this thing out. Let me just kind of give you an idea of where we are, Maplesville is down here. This is not affecting you. This is not affecting Chilton County. That uh, possible tornadic circulation is coming up into the eastern part of Bibb. And again, that'll be crossing 82 east of Centerville and Brent and then crossing Highway 139 north of Randolph. And if it holds together, the general motion is up toward Montevallo and Shelby County. But that's a big if, like we've uh, talked about. The history of these storms this morning, they've typically been on for but we've seen these good signatures for about 10, 15 minutes, and then they go away, and the warnings are canceled. But this is the only warning in the state right now for this one storm moving out of Perry into Bibb. And again, that uh, possible tornadic circulation is going to be uh, crossing Highway 82 soon. Nobody should be traveling 82 between the Chilton County line and Centerville. And if it holds together, it's going to be crossing 139, Highway 25, up uh, in the vicinity of maybe uh, Wilton, or somewhere below that. Again, Montevallo is here. Wilton is right here. That's 139 coming south down toward Randolph. Uh, and uh, so it's a little noisy, but again, the Weather Service believes there's enough evidence of something there to keep that warning in effect. Uh, I will say the circulation is not that tight on radar, but again, we're seeing a lowered correlation coefficient product in here that could represent some debris that's being lofted. And it's interesting, we had a storm earlier tonight with a very strong lowered correlation coefficient. And so far, right. we've not been able to find a lot of that damage. But remember, this is a fairly rural, rural state. And a lot of times, tornadoes touch down in very sparsely populated areas and not by major highways. And sometimes it takes a drone or a helicopter to see the damage the next day when you've got the first light of day. Trying to find damage at night, you know, four in the morning, is like finding a needle in a haystack here. Uh, but again, this is a... A severe thunderstorm that is capable of producing a tornado that is over the far eastern part of Bibb County, moving up in this direction like this. More than likely, it stays north of Randolph. Randolph's on Highway 139 north of Maplesville here. And uh, above that, you've got Ashby. You've got uh, the uh, Ironworks Park up there. You've got Briarfield. And then you've got uh, uh, Wilton 
and Montevallo. Uh, but uh, that's the way it looks now. Let's go back to Max or uh, WEX 05 for the velocity display with this. Again, you know, that's not overwhelming. In fact, let's do an animation of this thing, kind of see what the history of this has been coming through parts of northern Perry. And watch right through here. Again, you can see that uh, there's clearly circulation here. The storm is spinning, but Charles, I, I wouldn't write my, you know, my sister about this one. It's, <laughs> it's, uh, uh, it's, but still, you've got to pay attention. You, you've right. got to pay attention to this stuff. There, right? there have been other signs, you know, just uh, something up there like that. The correlation coefficient was the key, I think, to them issuing this warning. And the latest scan here it doesn't look as impressive right here as it's going to cross over the county line and then Highway 82 here. Um, so we're, we're kind of keeping an eye on it. There's some spots around uh, that uh, that are, are pretty interesting. I uh, just want to keep an eye on, on mine from uh, on the, the high resolution radar. And there is a little bit better spot. Uh, you see the last, this little scan here, right in here, this is where uh, that debris signature would be. So this is, this is that confirmation that the Weather Service used to uh, pull the trigger on this. It's this debris signature here. It's going to cross over the county line in the next moment or two. Highway 82, Alabama 139, and then moving northeast. And these storms are moving pretty fast, about 40, 45 miles an hour. So uh, limited time to react. And I really think for now it's, it's pretty much uh, mainly in Bibb County. So if you are in the south end of Bibb County near uh, active uh, trio sand mountain you guys uh, sand mountain you're not technically in that but just uh, know you not, you need to pay attention nobody needs to be out on highway 82 here and, uh, and this is going to continue moving about 40 miles an hour to the north northeast again very heavily northerly component to this movement uh, tonight on these storms uh, not typically of what we see uh, Perry County, you are in the all clear. Uh, the tornado warning for you has been canceled, so you guys are clear. Now the tornado warning is strictly for Bibb County, and that is again until 415. So let me say too, like Charles, uh, people are asking why are sirens going off in Cullman? We don't know. Are they still going off? Is because that the, the tornado warning was canceled about yeah. 20 minutes ago. There is no tornado warning for Cullman County. That's that. There are days, Charles, I want to climb those poles, take those suckers <laughs> down and burn them. You know, every time somebody says I didn't hear the warning, he loses his hair on his head. Yeah, th this is the reason I got nothing up here. It's <laughs> dealing with sirens. And they, they serve a purpose. They reach a limited number of people outdoors. They don't tell you anything. You can't hear them inside. They're, they're not effective. Um, why they're sounding as Coleman, we don't know. There's no warning in effect there. None. I mean, I, I'm not going to make up something that doesn't exist. Uh, maybe somebody... Thanks for something going on there, but the, the, the weather service in Huntsville, all the meteorologists, there is no warning for Coleman County. Uh, if there was, we would be on TV telling you about it. So why is it sirens are going off? I, I don't know. Uh, all right, so 344, that's a noisy look there off yeah. the uh, correlation coefficient. That is really noisy. I don't think we've got a TDS here. That's just noise. So, and again, there's a little notch right there, a little inflow notch. And, Whatever that thing is, it's about to cross Highway 82. There could be a small tornado down here, but uh, the velocity display seems very, very broad. It's, it's just not really there. In fact, let's take WEX 05. And that's just not really a tornado signature. Yeah, there's some broad rotation there, but the, the velocities are way down. And uh, I don't expect them to extend this. In fact, I would expect this to be canceled fairly soon. And they just did. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> just like that. So the Weather Service in Birmingham has canceled the tornado warning for Bib. And let's go back to Max 1. And we have, once again. Don't say it. No tornado warnings, in fact, for the whole <laughs> state. How about that? Uh, in fact, uh, let's. Put the watch warning map on here and let's just show you the current situation. There, there is a severe thunderstorm warning, looks like for Cullman County, yeah, maybe, Charles. Maybe they pulled the sirens are fired off yeah, for I, that. I don't know. I, th there's no tornado warning. Right. For, there's no tornado warning in effect for uh, Cullman County, none whatsoever. Uh, there is a severe thunderstorm warning in effect there. Um, and there's a tornado watch in effect for basically from I-65 East. The tornado threat is over for Tuscaloosa, Fayette, 
Marion, Lamar, Pickens, Green, Hale, Sumter, Marengo. You're done. Go to bed. Get you a good nap. The severe weather threat continues from Birmingham East. The county's in yellow. Tornado watch continues until 5 a.m. Uh, and there are no active tornado warnings in the state. Uh, and again, the Weather Service in Birmingham says they're about to clear Winston and Walker here. As the, as the storms move east, they'll be clearing counties. So let's put the radar back on here and give you a big, broad perspective. Uh, in the storms that are in progress, you can see they've got heavy ones coming through parts of Birmingham. It's about to just, uh, hope we don't have a leak in the roof up here because it is about <laughs> to start pouring rain. For those that don't know, uh, ABC 3340 is in River Chase in Hoover. We're not on Red Mountain. We're down here. And uh, again, that line of heavier storms stretches down through Shelby County, parts of Bibb and Perry, uh, heavier storms in parts of Cullman County. And again, the storms in Cullman County could produce gusty straight line winds. There's no tornado warning in effect there. Uh, light rain falling over parts of northeast Alabama. But the storms are fairly well behaved coming through Birmingham. They were fairly well behaved coming through Tuscaloosa. And that's the thing, you know, if you read what I was writing last night or trying to say, this is not unusual for Alabama. This happens a lot. This is mid-April. This is the core of the tornado season. And we have events like this over and over and over. We always have. We always will. We get through them just fine. Uh, you know, in this day of, you know, hype and hyperbole and, you know, some, some people get their underwear flapping up down their legs, you know, when the weather gets bad. I mean, look, I just... We, there's no need to be anxious. If you can get the warning, and if you know where you're going, got a plan, we're going to be fine. We will be just fine, and uh, we're going to be fine. We'll sit here and watch this through the night with you, through the morning hours, but so far, so good. At this point, we have no active tornado warnings in effect, and I think we can celebrate that. Uh, still some lingering rain on the western side of the state, but these heavier storms will come into East Alabama. If you're watching us in places like Leesburg, Center, Anniston, Gadsden, Piedmont, Ashland, Lineville, Talladega, Sylacauga, Asheville, Pelt City, Roanoke, Wadawi, Alexander City, Rockford. You're going to deal with this stuff later this morning. But at the moment, they are relatively behaved, which is good. The, the instability values tend to be fairly low at this hour of the day, but still, they're high enough. If you walk outside, if you're over here, especially in places like Ashland or Sylacauga, Rockford, Alexander City, it is just muggy and warm. Uh, temperatures are in the mid-70s over here. Look at these, 75 in Anniston and Gadsden, Alexander City at 73, 70 in Birmingham. It, it, you can feel it, you know, this, uh, it just, it's got that feel to it. The dew, and it's mainly you're feeling the dew point. The yeah, dew points we'll are quite high. Um, oh, mid 60s. Oh. Um, yeah, pretty, pretty tough stuff. But again, this is coming on through. Uh, let's punch up the uh, sky cam, maybe uh, pick one, anyone, maybe Grandview I'm, or Birmingham. I'm on the Galleria right now. OK, let's so. look at the Galleria. That's great. Uh, <laughs> you got this. Uh, so down below, Charles, what do you got down there? That's uh, Highway 31 and 459, uh, you know, you can see traffic is moving. People are moving right along, but the winds have started to pick up. I noticed that just a few minutes ago. Sustained winds at about 17 miles an hour. That's a one minute average. We're starting to see a lot of lightning. The rain is starting to get a bit heavier here, and uh, it's going to be one of those good soakers, uh, the gully washers that you get, uh, frog stranglers, as one of my buddy calls them, uh, moving through. And what's going to happen? A good soaking rain, a lot of lightning, the windy conditions moving through Hoover. We're starting to hear it here at the studios in Hoover. And uh, what's going to happen, that's going to pass on through. And after this initial line comes through, uh, the threat really starts to wind down quickly. There are two initial lines of storms, and they've kind of merged here just a little bit. Uh, wind gusts, the maximum wind gust we've had here is about 31 miles an hour. So we can kind of bounce around. I kind of want to see what downtown Birmingham is saying here. We go to the... Uh, Good old children's camera, and we're not going to see a whole lot. Uh, just uh, kind of tilt down just a little bit. Swing it uh, this way a hair and look into uh, downtown a bit. You can see the wind's showing calm. I think I think our uh, I think our anemometer there isn't working because we know the winds haven't been calm. Uh, but still 70 degrees over 68, the dew point still very, very warm and muggy. That negative energy that you feel out there in the air is still there. And so it's going to continue to kind of stay with us at least for a little while longer. Um, 
you know, the, the risk for severe weather will die down. It'll still be fairly muggy, at least for a few hours until we start to pull in some of that cooler, drier air. It won't be much, but it'll be enough that it'll help. I think tomorrow we'll mix in at least a little sunshine late in the day, and then early next week we start to see some of that change as well. It'll be, I think, quite pleasant for the beginning of the week. And by the way, we do have a tornado warning in the state now, but that, that's down in Mobile. Okay. Uh, yeah, that, that, that is... Uh, there's a tornado warning in effect, really, for the, for the Mobile Delta. Uh, got a little circulation around Satsuma, Criola, Axis on 43 north of uh, Mobile. And that goes right across the uh, Mississippi Delta, or the, the Mobile Delta. It's the Mississippi Delta. It's late, early. Uh, I don't know what it is anymore, but you're right. I would not want to be it on It made the, sense to me. I would not want to be on the Mobile <laughs> Delta at, at 3.52 a.m. They got, you talk about woolly boogers and swamp monsters down there. Man, they've got <laughs> Crocs. I mean, woo, boy. That's a, but it's a, it, it is a, just an incredible natural resource in our state, uh, the Delta. It's an amazing country down there, but I, I wouldn't want to be down there at 4 o'clock in the morning. But no. uh, <laughs> you've you got a tornado circulation basically coming across the Delta. And, of course, nobody lives in there. It's all swampy uh, marshland. Uh, it's where the uh, Tom Bigby and the Alabama all come together, and you've got the Tinsaw and the Middle River and the... Uh, uh, fascinating place, but uh, that's going to come out on the Baldwin County side around uh, Stockton, passing way north of uh, Baymanet. And uh, that's it. Uh, so um, that is pretty we're, good. We're doing all right right now. Right. Um, and again, uh, we're waiting to see if they'll clear these counties out coming up. Yeah, uh, we're going to see more counties coming out of the watch. But again, some of you, it's pouring. Uh, the, your weather radio didn't wake you up because we have no warnings, but maybe the wind and the rain and the thunder woke you up. Uh, understand that, uh, uh, and I see now the weather service has taken out Walker and Winston from the tornado watch. So Walker and Winston, you're good. Go to bed, get you a good nap. You're in Jasper, Double Springs, Haleyville, Arley, all is well. Uh, you can see the watch has been canceled over here for Walker and Winston. Watch continues in effect for Blunt, Coleman, Jefferson, Shelby, Bibb, Perry, and counties over here to the east. I think uh, as it refreshes, uh, they've disappeared for a moment. So okay. Don't yeah, right. you're, you're under a tornado watch over there. There you there, go. Yeah, you're yeah. under a tornado watch here. Don't, don't get me wrong. That goes all the way to the Georgia line. And, but again, as the storms continue to shift east, they'll clear the watch as we go along. So uh, this, uh, it's, it's really good. You know, it's interesting. Uh, earlier in the week, it looked like the window for severe storms would begin at 3 a.m. And here it is, 3.54, <laughs> and the storms are over. And that's why we always say, watch for these forecast changes, because, uh, you know, nailing down the exact time, that's tough. It's tough business. People think forecasting the weather is easy. Uh, you know, any stooge can do it. We're, we're stooges, but it, it's, it's tough. Uh, but again, it, it, the, the, the most serious damage has been across the line over here. This is Monroe County, Mississippi. They took a really, really bad hit in a community called Hamilton, not Alabama, but Mississippi. Five people were killed last night, and um, uh, you know a lot of people are still missing. It's pretty tough there. Let's go back to the radar, Charles. Uh, got reports of uh, some small hail in Shelby County, Pelham, Helena, where we are here. I was trying to see if that's what I'm seeing here on the uh, Galleria Tower camera. Yeah, As a matter of fact, sky cam full. You can't see it well, but you see a little bit bouncing off the rooftop here. You'll see some of that uh, kind of change direction there. Maybe some small hail. Uh, definitely some gusty winds. I mean, it is uh, it is howling. I'm gonna wait to see how that updates here on this uh, uh, on this equipment there. But uh, definitely getting some heavy rain. Uh, probably some uh, small hail there, probably even a little bit larger hail to the south of here as you get back into Pelham. But I definitely saw at least some of that kind of bouncing off the side, and and, and we saw that. I wish I could, wish we had a, a, a microphone up right. there to hear. Yeah, let's that. take. Uh, hey, Brian, Brian, and uh, Megan, are y'all with us? Uh, I'm looking here. at their stream. What, what do you guys have down there? Okay, we're we're uh, on. Uh, let's see, unit, is it so the I Hurricane know. Hurricane Road? Right. Um, north of uh, 2059, and uh, we've been speaking with the sheriff's deputy here, and uh, basically there is a tree down across the highway here 
of uh, the road, I should say, not a highway. And uh, the, the, uh, there is no damage to a mobile home park here. Uh, so that, that's erroneous information. But this also looks like this could be straight line wind, James. Okay. And again, uh, your, your exact location, Brian? Uh, uh, we're here, I can pull it up. just off of University and Hurricane North Road. Road. North of 2059. Or 11 and Hurricane Road. US yeah. 11 and Hurricane Road. Okay. Uh, well, good deal. Well, thanks, guys. Again, uh, this, but you, you guys have seen Correct. no evidence of anybody yeah, injured or anything else like down there, have you? Correct. And we've been speaking with this officer. It turns out we've crossed his path two or three times today. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah. So, it, 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 again, it looks like this was probably a more straight line wind damage. I, I think for some reason, James, there was something keeping these rotations from reaching the ground. Okay. And normally you get that calm, and we didn't have the calm, and we didn't have any hail. Yeah. It was just a full-blown yeah. downpour during the whole time, so that was kind of odd. Yeah, yeah. Again, we're watching so, uh, uh, Brian Peters and talking to some folks down there that went through this. Yeah, Megan has taken the, the uh, iPad and is showing the, the tree that's across the highway. It, it, is it... Is it down on the ground or just kind of crossing? It's up in the air. It's up in the air. Yeah. So, I yeah. broke all the branches off, threw them off the side, and they're going to bring a chance on the so. All right. Thanks, James. Okay. Uh, Brian, thank you again. Uh, let's go back to uh, Max 1. And if you're just joining us, we are in the process of a severe weather event here this early in the morning. It's coming up on 4 o'clock. James Spann with Charles Daniel in the studio. We have Brian Peters and Megan Thomas out in the field early this morning. And the storms are behaved for now, for our end of the state. Uh, we've got technically a severe thunderstorm warning for Cullman County, but really for most of the county, it's just a big mass of rain. Heavier storms are up in uh, parts of Morgan County now. Moderate rain falling around Gadsden. Heavy rain falling in the southern part of the Birmingham metro, but there's no strong winds. There's no tornado threat here. Uh, the heavier rain extends down into parts of uh, uh, Bibb and Perry counties, moving into Chilton County. But uh, it's just nice and quiet, Charles. Goodness gracious. I mean, uh, so it stays that way. Yeah, I, mean, these, I think uh, the contrast of like what you were saying earlier, the, 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 we thought this was going to be a 2 a.m. to 2 p.m. or a noon kind of thing. This is moving through very quickly. And the earlier that we can get this over with, and like we have anything to do with it, but the faster these storms get out of here, the better it is for those services, big church services going on uh, tomorrow morning, or I should say this morning at this point. But uh, big, you know, a lot of folks thinking about, I'm going to get up and go do this. And I think that's good news. We get this out of here on time. Uh, it's 4 a.m. We're coming up on 4 a.m. very quickly here. And uh, what will happen is I think as most of these storms move on, uh, we'll be able to get uh, folks up and out to those church services, those early services, without, uh, without too many terrible problems. So that's good news so far. Uh, but we're going to continue to watch it. The tornado watch is until 9 a.m. officially. And uh, I don't think we make it to 9 a.m., but I do think uh, we'll see some storms at least for a few more hours. And we just got to watch these uh, little rogue storms that keep popping in here, these little developments along the line. You get these little inflow notches that will form, and then all of a sudden you get one or two uh, scans of a good rotation popping up. So uh, we'll watch this. We'll stay with you. If you want to go to bed, as long as you have a weather radio or an app or something that you can uh, rely on to wake you up if you're out ahead of the line of storms, including Clanton, Sylacauga, Anniston, Oxford, uh, Gadsden, you're in the rain now. But if you're out ahead of the main line of storms and you want to go to sleep, make sure you have a way of getting those warnings. We'll be here if those warnings go off, wake you up. We'll be here to inform you what's going on. So make sure you're just ready to go, something to wake you up, and you've got a plan for uh, when that warning happens, if it happens. A couple of notes here. Uh, I probably had 1.2 million questions today. How can I watch you? You know, uh, we've morphed into a new society where mm -hmm. uh, a generation doesn't know about free over-the-air television. Um, and that, that's fine. I totally, in fact, we want you watching on these phones. We would prefer you watching on the phones in your safe place. Uh, um, the, the easiest thing to do is to download any 3340 app. And free, you can watch it that way, right on your phone. Uh, the old traditional old school website, abc3340.com. Can't go wrong with that. We stream it live on Facebook on that platform. 
uh, we, we know that there's some issues with the over-the-top apps, for the over-the-top boxes for Apple TV and Roku. The Stir app and the News On app, we are not on. Um, I'll go over there and pitch a hissy fit tomorrow, or Monday, yeah, tomorrow, and see if we can get that straightened out. I'm, I only pitch hissy fits whenever we can't uh, get our coverage on, on some of these things, but we'll, we'll make that happen. We'll get that fixed. Uh, uh, but you can receive us free over the air. Television, it's amazing. Local TV stations, we broadcast over the air in beautiful, high quality. And all you need is a little cheap antenna and any TV set, and you would be shocked at how good it looks. And we have a whole generation that they, that they don't even know that. They just expect you have to pay for television. So it's free. It doesn't cost anything. So you can always watch us directly over the air in addition to the 3340.com and the apps, the ABC 3340 uh, app. So uh, here it is, 402, and uh, we are watching the weather with you. We have no warnings except for one lone severe thunderstorm warning up here for Cullman County. When does that sucker expire? That needs to go away. <laughs> uh, that, that I think it was, I thought it was 4 o'clock. It might be 4.15. Uh, 4.15. Okay. Okay, they've got it until 4.15. James, um, I'll tell you something. Uh, I'm watching this sky cam here. This is the Grandview Medical Center camera. And uh, it got really, really dark all of a sudden. Uh, this is Highway 280 down below. We were looking right down 280, usually very, very well lit. All the power just went out. Oh, really? So or, is, I don't or, know or, is the, or is the rain that heavy? Uh, I don't know if it's the rain. It could be the rain. Uh, but I know we've got some power outages reported through parts of Hoover, so it may just be the rain. But um, I got a report of uh, power outages uh, just on the other side of Highway 31 from the station. Uh, so we're uh, in, in Hoover and Pelham area. So uh, I'm wondering if, uh, if we've got some power outages here as well. So interesting. And I wouldn't be surprised. We had enough wind. It doesn't take much. You get a wind blowing just a branch and it touches that line sometimes. That's enough to knock the power out. So, um, again, I always ask, please be patient. The crews will get the power back on as soon as they possibly can. But definitely some heavy rain in that area. Yeah, I uh, remember one time uh, we had the, the blizzard of 93 and uh, we were taking calls I was with a guy named Tommy Charles doing a radio show. I, I was at the TV station, of course, but I was on with him. He was taking calls, and some lady was just chewing out the power company. Hey, <laughs> that power's been out 15 minutes. I'm getting cold. And, uh, of course, you know, these men, these linemen, they're, they're out there in brutal yeah. conditions. And, and we had, in the blizzard, I want to say 250,000 people with no power. And I said, ma'am, these men are out away from their families in brutal conditions that you don't even understand. And it's going to take days and days to get all this power back. And then she just went off. We finally hung up on her. <laughs> I mean, there's only so much you can do, you know. Uh, but uh, no, the, the, the power company, they work long, tough hours. Those linemen are heroes. They are just great. To me, it's a miracle the power comes back as quickly as it does in situations like this. But again, uh, the heavier part of the line coming through Birmingham down into Shelby County, there's nothing severe. And, and uh oh, here's a tornado warning. Yep. I hear the, uh, what, this is what wireless emergency alerts sound like. People say, what does it sound like? Well, it sounds like that, all right? So let's oh, that's, go. That's for let's, Jefferson and Shelby and St. Clair. Right, so. so let's take a look at that. Let's zoom into this. This is a new tornado warning that's in effect for parts of St. Clair, Jefferson, and Shelby counties. A tornado is near Chelsea moving northeast at 45 miles an hour. All right, so we're going to uh, take a closer look at this. Again, uh, Chelsea is right here. And again, a lot of th these warnings are automated sometimes. Uh, this is US Highway 280. And uh, what I want to do here is go in and take a look at the, let's put the velocity on here, Charles, if we can, coming from your box first. And, um, We'll be looking for a storm rotation here. And again, you can see what's uh, apparently some broad rotation in progress there. Yeah. Uh, that's located around Highway 280. All right, let's... Uh, Everybody's phone's going to go off right now. Yeah, so let, let's, uh, let's take WEX 05 on the air real quick. Yeah, I, again, you've this, got a better this, look. Yeah. Right, this is the spot that the Weather Service is concerned about. So we have the possibility of storm rotation. This is U.S. Highway 280. This is the... Uh, community of Chelsea right here and again that is going to be moving northeast 
basically up County Road 41. Uh, so uh, if you are in Chelsea, if you are in Mount Laurel, if you live in a neighborhood like Greystone Cove, Greystone Farms, Shoal Creek, you need to be in a safe place right now. This is in North Shelby County. Let's expand this out. Let's show the polygon, Charles. Let's go back to Max 1. Uh, and uh, I want to show the polygon. All right, so uh, this, let's keep expanding this out. We're going to show the whole tornado warning polygon here. So again, this will include US 280 from Interstate 459. That's around the colonnade and the summit down to Westover. That's that whole stretch of US Highway 280, a very densely populate, populated part of Shelby County. Then out on the Highway 25 corridor, this is out around Dunavant, um, and then into Shelby County, and this includes Pell City and Odenville. So again, we have a possible tornado that's developing really around the Highland Lakes neighborhood in Chelsea and Shelby County that's going to be coming down Highway 41 and 119, that, pro that approximate area, then crossing Highway 25, then crossing into Shelby County, possibly affecting places like Moody, Odenville, or Pell City. Remember, tornadoes are tiny. These polygons allow for a lot of room for error, but the deal is respect the polygon. If you are in the polygon, you've got to be in a safe place. So let's go back and uh, let's go back to WEX 05. And uh, let me show you this. This is your velocity couplet that's right here. And again, the couplet itself is going to be very close to Highland Lakes is the subdivision that the part of the subdivision is up on top of Double Oak Mountain. Part, part of it's down here in the valley. Uh, but uh, Dunavant Valley Road is Highway 41. Uh, you've got the, the treetop, which sits right here. That's at 41 and US 280. That's an entertainment complex for kids. Uh, and again, 41 runs down toward Mount Laurel. And again, if you are anywhere near Mount Laurel, Greystone Farms, Greystone Cove, Shoal Creek, Stony Brook, you need to be in a safe place all the way down to Dunavant. And again, this warning extends up into uh, Shelby County. And Charles, you said you saw the power go out on that Grandview Skycam, which makes sense. It correlates with this. Yeah, it looks like Let, there's some of it starting to come back. So, um, but it, it definitely was sitting here, and then all of a sudden, a lot of the a lot of the lights, especially further beyond, I would say Valleydale. Uh, you know, we we can see kind of Valleydale and a little bit more up the hill. All of those lights went out. So that's uh, that's what we saw. Uh, on the SkyCam network, kind of keeping an eye on that. So 280 is down below. This is our Grandview Medical Center camera. It's right there on 280, uh, just south of the summit and uh, just uh, right there at the Cahaba River. And we're looking back. You've got a super target on your right. You've got, of course, uh, a couple of uh, fast food places uh, right down below. And usually we can see pretty far, almost all the way up to uh, really the Valleydale Road uh, intersection. There's the Home Depot there. You've got uh, the shopping center on on the uh, the west side of uh, 280. That'd be right side of the 280. What we're seeing, and all of those lights went out. So, I don't know if they're slowly kind of creeping back on. <laughs> okay, let's go back what, to Max One uh, real quick. What can we see there? Go ahead. Yeah, just wanted to kind of confirm the visual with that. But understand, we have the possibility of a tornado in northern Shelby County. And again, that's Alabama Highway 119. That runs from 280 back up to Leeds. Shelby County Highway 41 runs right in through here, and this is called Dunavant Valley Road. And uh, again, the possible tornadic circulation is located near Highland Lakes. This is the crossover where the 280 crosses Double Oak Mountain right here. Uh, again, the Highland Lakes entrance up on the hill is about right here. And Dunavant Valley Road is right in through here, and this possible tornado is going to go right down Dunavant Valley Road, Shelby County Highway 41. So again, if you are in Mount Laurel, Greystone Cove, Greystone Farms, the uh, new uh, subdivision, the uh, uh, Brock uh, subdivision, Shoal Creek, then all the way down toward uh, 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 Dunavant, the community of Dunavant on Highway 25. You need to be in a safe place right now. So again, everybody along Dunavant Valley Road in Shelby County, you need to be in a safe place. And again, this is a small room, hall closet bathroom on the lowest floor near the center and no windows. Uh, and if you can, put on a helmet, a bicycle helmet for everybody. That's adults and kids. We like for people to have a portable air horn if you have one, if you need help, and for people to have on hard sole shoes. 
Uh, this is a very densely populated part of the Birmingham Metro in northern Shelby County, and we'll know pretty soon if we have any damage in through here. But again, this is going to be going right down Dunavant Valley Road, Shelby County Highway 41, uh, down toward Highway 25, Alabama 25. From there, it will keep on moving up into St. Clair County. So again, the, the, the polygon includes parts of St. Clair County, specifically places like Moody, Odenville, and Pell City. The polygon fans out, of course, as it goes farther away from the storm itself. But again, uh, we're seeing still pretty good evidence of storm rotation in through there. Let's take WEX 05 very quickly. This is a different look at this storm. And again, you can see the evidence of the circulation right here. That's Interstate 459. This is US 280. And again, Highland Lakes, the entrance is right in through here. And that's awfully close to Highland Lakes. And uh, you've got the ridge line. Let me just say this. A lot of people think they're protected from tornadoes because of, I'm in a valley or there's a ridge here. That stuff doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Uh, so if you're on top of the ridge, a neighborhood like the Crest at Greystone, or if you're down in the valley, a neighborhood like uh, Mount Laurel, you've got to be in a safe place. So again, everybody in this polygon needs to be in a safe place. Let's go back to Max 1. And uh, again, this is going to be a closer look at this. And again, you can see that storm rotation is in the vicinity of the Highland Lakes neighborhood. Uh, this is Dunavant Valley Road. This is Bear Creek Road, which is County Road 43. Uh, Dunavant Valley Road is right down through here. This is County Road 41. So County Road 41 here, County Road 43 is right here. And again, both of these are clearly in that uh, tornado warning polygon. The Greystone neighborhood is over here. Greystone is involved in this. Uh, Hugh Daniel Drive cuts over the mountain right over here. So again, uh, this is a tornado warning in effect for northern Shelby and parts of St. Clair counties in that we have a tornado warning in effect uh, for, let's see, Charles, the expiration time on this is going to be 445. Yeah, 445. It's 413 right now. Uh, so again, we have a tornado in the vicinity of Highland Lakes, and we're a little concerned about that debris being lofted. Again, this is a little noisy, but yeah. uh, that, that could be... That could be some debris that's being lofted in through here, but clearly there's strong evidence of a tornado that's moving in through here, okay? Uh, so again, uh, this is the Highland Lake subdivision. Let's go back a little tighter. I like that tighter shot right there. Uh, Carnoustie, this is Shoal Creek. Stonegate, that's the Stonegate neighborhood uh, right over here. Uh, and again, uh, uh, if you keep going on, you'll run to Alabama Highway 25. But uh, again, Mount Laurel, uh, Greystone, all the Greystone neighborhoods, but especially the neighborhoods, uh, the Crest and down 41, the Farms and the Cove. Uh, if you are in uh, Shoal Creek, you need to be in a safe place, all the way down to the community of Dunavant, uh, right down Highway 41. Everybody down 41 should be sheltered right now. And again, no cars, no mobile homes, nobody should be driving along Shelby County 41 or Shelby County 43. They've issued another one here in southern parts of okay. Shelby County. So this is a new tornado warning. This is tornado warning number two for the possibility of a tornado coming through southern Shelby County. So tornado warning number two, this is southern Shelby County. This will be affecting places like Calera, Columbiana, Wilsonville. Uh, this is for a second circulation that's located uh, down to the south. And again, this is in southern Shelby County. So this is uh, the second possible circulation we have here. So two different tornado warning polygons this morning. This is the, this is the southernmost tornado warning polygon. So again, if you are in Calera, if you are in the far southern part of Alabaster, uh, this, is Shelby this is Alabama Highway 70 that runs over to Columbiana. Shelby County Highway 26 is right here. That's how a lot of folks get from Alabaster to Columbiana. But Columbiana is in the polygon. The city of Alabaster itself is not. But again, far south Alabaster down to Calera is in this. Columbiana, Wilsonville, and that runs all the way over here to the 280 corridor. So this is tornado warning number two. This is the southern one. And again, the northern one is right up in here. So let's expand this out. Let me just show Shelby County and St. Clair and these two distinct warnings. So the southern warning is this one right here. This includes Columbiana and Wilsonville. The initial warning we had, this is the one that includes County Road 41, County Road 43, Alabama 119, uh, back up into St. Clair County to Pell City and Odenville and Moody. So if you are in either one of these tornado warning polygons uh, in Shelby or St. Clair counties, you need to be in a safe place right now. I know it's inconvenient. It's 4.15 in the morning. It's not a lot of fun, but you need to stay in your shelter. So let's put the radar data back on with this view, and we'll take a look at uh, this. And again, you're not going to see a lot on the reflectivity. The velocity will tell the story. Uh, Give me a second. It's uh, locking up Okay. Here. So again, uh, in fact, what I can do is... Uh, 
in fact, I'm looking at mine, and the good news, the signatures are getting a little noisy here. Uh, but the tornado has crossed Hugh Daniel Drive, and it's moving northeast with this lead storm. So again, uh, the tornado warning has come across Hugh Daniel Drive, and it's continuing either near the top of Double Oak Mountain around the crest at Greystone, right down the ridge, or down in the valley along Shelby County 41 or Alabama 119, which would be the main Greystone neighborhoods, uh, the newer and the older Greystone. There are two golf courses there. Then uh, right back down toward Leeds. So again, the main concern here is for everybody along Shelby County 41. That's Dunavant Valley Road, Alabama Highway 119 into St. Clair County. This includes the city of Moody, includes the city of Leeds. If you're in any of these places we've talked about, you need to be in a safe place. And again, that's going to be a small room, lowest floor, near the center, away from windows. Uh, and again, uh, we have had reports that this is confirmed and it's down in Highland Lakes. Uh, this is from uh, uh, reports coming from the National Weather Service. Uh, we don't have any specific reports yet, Charles, at this point. You keep a close eye on the uh, social media channels, and uh, if we get any uh, specific damage reports from that area, we will let you know. Yeah. Uh, but again, we have two distinct polygons in effect for Shelby County, okay? Uh, this is the northern polygon, and again, this is the call to actions for people that live along Highway 119 from Greystone to Leeds, Shelby County Highway 41, Donovan Valley Road from Mount Laurel over to Donovan. Uh, you need to be in a safe place, and then into St. Clair County. This includes Moody all the way to Odenville and Pell City. Uh, we'll see how it behaves as it moves northeast. Uh, again, Trustville, Birmingham, not involved in this, okay? This is for parts of northern Shelby County and the far southwestern part of St. Clair County. Let's go down to the second tornado warning. We're going to work these two warnings here. This is tornado warning number one. This is tornado warning number two. This is for the southern part of Shelby County. And again, this will be including places like Columbiana, Calera, and Wilsonville. Uh, this is Alabama Highway 70 right here. This is Alabama Highway uh, 25 you see right here. Uh, that runs from Calera back over to Wilsonville. Everybody along uh, US 31, Highway 25, Highway 70, Shelby County 26, you need to be in a good safe place until this storm passes, okay? Uh, the velocity signatures are not overwhelming at this point, but again, they still are there, representative of the fact that we might have a tornado down. Uh, so again, we have uh, tornado warnings in effect for Shelby and parts of St. Clair counties two distinct polygons. This is the southern polygon, and again, this is storm relative velocity. And again, that looks more like a strong straight line wind type event. Let's go to the second storm, the northern storm up here in the northern part of Shelby County. And again, uh, this one is coming rapidly up through northeastern Shelby County in the general direction of Leeds and Moody. And we're not seeing a lot here. Can we put on the uh, base velocity, Charles? Just as a, I don't know if we have that product that's easy to pull up or not. I've got radial uh, velocity. I'll take that. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I'll take that. And again, we're just not seeing a lot at this point. Uh, and again, we're in the phase of the morning in this type of configuration. These would typically be small, short-lived, spin-up type tornadoes that don't last especially long. Um, but yet, they certainly can produce some damage, especially in a situation like this. And let me just say, we're simulcasting on the uh, Summit Media Stations in Birmingham. That's WZZK. 104.7 plus all their sister stations, so you can listen to us on the radio that way. Uh, KISS FM, uh, 106.9, all of their stations were on the radio in Birmingham now for the warnings that we have here. So we thank our radio partners for that. So again, the first tornado warning we have is for a storm that is coming down uh, Highway 119, Shelby County 41, toward Leeds in the general direction of Leeds. Of course, Leeds is where Jefferson, St. Clair, and Shelby counties all come together. Uh, and this will be crossing over into St. Clair County, affecting possibly places like Moody. Uh, the polygon itself does include Pell City and Odenville. We'll see how this thing behaves as it moves north and east. But again, uh, this we're watching this little donut hole right in through here, which was on that last volume scan. But yeah. again, the possible tornado is coming up on Highway 25. Highway 25, that's where it cuts over the mountain right here, by the way. Uh, uh, and then... This is Double Mountain, and then you come over here, and this is where it cuts over another mountain coming back over to Leeds on U.S. Highway 78 right here. Uh, but that possible tornado is about to hit the Highway 25 corridor. Uh, let's give an all clear now for Highland Lakes. Um, let's give an all clear for Mount Laurel and Shoal Creek. 
If you are in any of these places, then you are all clear from this tornado. Uh, the concern now is shifting over toward Leeds and Moody and St. Clair County. This is, these are moving along very quickly. Let me just say the weather service on the southern storm, again, this is the northern storm. Let's look at the southern storm, Charles. Uh, the weather service in Birmingham, they believe they had a fairly close call. Yeah, their offices are right there. Right, uh, as they are at the Shelby County Airport. And uh, by exactly, don't exactly know what they mean by that, but they apparently think that they might have had a tornado close to their facility, which is at the Shelby County Airport. Their office is on the west side of US uh, or inter Interstate 65. Uh, but again, this possible tornado will be coming out uh, toward Columbiana. This is Highway 25 coming down toward Calera. This is Alabama Highway 70 that runs over to 31 uh, from Columbiana. And then Shelby County 26 goes up toward Alabaster. Um, for everybody in that area, uh, we want you to just stay in a safe place until the uh, storms pass. I'll be honest with you, Charles, the velocity is pretty noisy. In fact, I'll just show you. Let's look at uh, WEX 05. Yeah. Uh, on both of these uh, storms, and uh, this is the northern storm. And again, you can see some evidence of circulation in through here coming up on leads, but it's awfully noisy at this point. Uh, that's not exactly a classic tornado signature. And down here in the southern storm, uh, again, there's evidence of maybe some strong straight line winds for sure, but that's not a classic tornado signature in through here. So, but again, the Weather Service, uh, they issued the warnings, and we believe in their team, and we want you to respect these two polygons. If you're in one, you need to be in a safe place. Let's go back over to Max 1, and uh, again, uh, Charles, I have not seen any damage. You know, th th this, these have come across some very, very populated areas here, and um, yeah, I, do, I, I would think we would know... Um, I, I, here's a report from Mount Laurel. Uh, the storm just passed. No power outage, but definite rotation and rain bands and the directions as it passed over, like there was some maybe a, a rotating updraft that came over. Um, I see that. Yeah, we, and we have many employees that live up and down these roads. So, uh, I'm, I mean, I've been checking in with them. I know we've got powers okay on Highway 280. I know uh, we've got some guys that uh, down in the Greystone area sending me messages saying, hey, heavy rain, but it's not too terribly bad. Um, and, uh, just, yeah, and, I, uh, and I, I live down in that area. And yeah, my, and I, my, I know. You know we, we, um, my wife did go down to our uh, tornado uh, safe place, and uh, uh, she says everything is okay there. So, uh, again, I think if we would have had some yeah. damage, we would know right away. Um, and apparently we're okay uh, from this northern storm. And, again, I'm not seeing... But, but something, ha something triggered in Highland Lakes. So the Weather Service received a report of a tornado in that subdivision. Highland Lakes sits on top of Double Oak Mountain, and then part of the subdivision is down uh, in the valley. Like way down uh, in the right, valley. Right, right on 40, <laughs> County Road 41. And that's when this warning was initiated. Um, and uh, again, I've yet to see a, a report from there, but, but it, it's 4.30 in the morning. A lot of times we don't get reports in the middle of the night very quickly. There could have been some damage there, but I've not heard of any damage from either one of these things. But in the lead storm, uh, the lead storm, it is coming through Leeds, Alabama right now, and then coming up toward Moody, and then ultimately uh, toward uh, perhaps Odenville, uh, Cook Springs, and Chula Vista. Uh, we have a tower cam at Bald Rock. Uh, Charles, we have a brand new yes, one. Yes, we do. Uh, Bald Rock Mountain sits right there. And if you ever drive Interstate 20, we've got a great view from that particular spot. And again, it's not in a population center, but it's way up there. The problem is it's the middle of the night and man, it's hard working <laughs> these things at night. You just can't see much. But uh, this is our Bald Rock Sky Cam. And obviously there's a whole lot of lightning going on there. It's, yeah, uh, I can't even tell you what direction. I think that's actually the tower right, light. That, that is the tower light, that is, <laughs> right. Um, yeah, right. Let's, I let's don't go even back know what direction yeah, we're let's, looking. Let's go so. back to Max 1. <laughs> uh, again, we just put that thing online a few days ago. We're still playing with that. But let's go back to the second tornado warning. So that's tornado warning number one for northern, uh, the, the northern storm. Tornado warning number two is this one down here. And again, uh, this is approaching Columbiana. So if you're in the city of Columbiana, you need to be in your safe place. I know it's no fun getting the kids up at 4.30 in the morning, putting a helmet on them, but that's the right thing to do. We hope the weather service will cancel these soon. Uh, same thing for Wilsonville over here. That's Highway 145 that goes down to Clanton. 
Uh, so again, the concern, it's going to be right down through here in the southern part of Shelby County. Uh, uh, Wilsonville or uh, Columbia Bannock back over to Wilsonville on that Highway uh, 25 corridor. And we are watching multiple sources. Uh, here's a report from Greystone Farms. No loss of power, heavy rain, and definitely a change of rain direction at one point. Uh, Calera at Walmart, we have power, heavy rain and high wind, but nothing visual as far as damage uh, is concerned there. Uh, here's a report heard it pass over us on Highway 41, Shelby County Highway 41. Um, so, um, here's somebody who says they live in Highland Lakes. They wouldn't have known something was happening. It seemed like just another routine thunderstorm. So apparently uh, there's not been any damage at Highland Lakes, or if so, uh, we don't know about it at this point. Have you seen this with the uh, fire uh, from the firemen? They say fire stations on 280 in the Narrows and Mount Laurel also reporting no issues so far. So they haven't had any reports or dis dispatches uh, Yeah, and, and again, so that's, it, uh, that's it, fantastic. Right, and that's Shelby County. They have uh, fire stations located on US 280, near Lee Branch. Now, this is not Hoover, this is uh, Shelby County, but yeah. they've got one on right on 280, right by Lee Branch, one in the Narrows on the south side of Double Oak Mountain, and one in the community of Mount Laurel, and uh, they're reporting zero issues, and these are the stations right in the path of this. Uh, they were in their safe places until a few minutes ago. They sheltered like everybody else. Um, I just got a note from my wife. She, she said she even shut the door in the tornado safe place. And she's a little claustrophobic, so that's pretty strong. Uh, it's, it's not, a, tornado safe places are never fun. You know, they're, they're concrete bunkers that are really small, and, uh, but, but they, they are safe. And that's what this is all about, it's staying safe. So uh, the, the warnings have not been canceled, okay? So uh, again, for the southern storm, if you're in Columbiana, Wilsonville, you want to be in a safe place. Let's go to the northern storm, okay? The, we're working two different storms here. Uh, this northern storm is, coming out here where St. Clair and Shelby counties come together. The threat has ended really for Leeds, but if you're in Moody or Wolf Creek, uh, I would stay sheltered. Uh, the polygon just misses Pell City. Pell City is not in this polygon. Uh, in fact, you can see Pell City is right here. That's the edge of the polygon. It does include Odenville and Branchville. Uh, so again, uh, if you're in Cook Springs, Chula Vista, uh, Moody, Branchville, Odenville. You need to be in a safe place. Again, we'll give an all clear to Highland Lakes, all the Greystone neighborhoods, Shoal Creek, Mount Laurel, uh, Stony Brook. If you're in those neighborhoods, all clear. The concern is now north and east of there, north and east of Alabama Highway 25. Bottom line is from that lead storm, the first storm, anybody west of Alabama 25, you're good. The concern is now east of Alabama Highway 25. And again, you're not seeing much. Uh, let's, I'll show you WEX 05. Let's go to WEX 05. Uh, they canceled that warning for Jefferson, Shelby, and St. Clair. They canceled the northern storm warning. Uh, so now we just have the one. Yep. So now we just have the one here in southern Shelby County. That's good news. Okay, there you go. So again, the warning, the northernmost warning has been canceled. Let's go back to max one. So if you are in Leeds, Pell City, Branchville, Odenville, Moody, this warning is off the board. There's nothing there. There's no rotation. The danger is over. That's the one that initiated back around Highland Lake. So that warning is ended. So no warning now. You can get out of your safe place, go back to bed. Let's go. Now we have one warning left, and that's this warning down here for the southern part of Shelby County. And again, you can see this includes uh, Columbiana and Wilsonville back over toward US 280 at Westover, almost to Harpersville. This is a fairly small part of, part of southern Shelby County. This is the Coosa River right here. This is Talladega County and this is Shelby County and that's your polygon. So uh, even though we don't see any overwhelming evidence of storm rotation in there, we still advise that you stay in your safe place until that warning is canceled. Uh, let me show you the Max or uh, WEX 05. And again, that's more of a strong straight line wind signal right there. That's not necessarily a tornado signature. So again, you could see some strong winds with a storm coming right into Columbiana. 
And again, that's moving to the northeast. That will affect uh, ultimately Wilsonville and then finally coming out on 280 up here around Westover and Harpersville. So we've got uh, a second tornado warning in effect for the southern part of uh, Shelby County. Uh, the possible tornado, according to the latest update from the Weather Service, near Columbiana. And again, you can see that rotation right in through here. This is Columbiana right here. Again, that, that's not the classic tornado look right there. That looks more like a straight line wind situation. But this thing came over the uh, Shelby County Airport. And again, the radar right here, this is at the, this is just across the interstate from the Shelby County Airport. You can see that uh, volleyball looking structure up on top of the tower there. Uh, the weather service is here. The radar is here. And uh, again, uh, for a small part of Shelby County, we've got that warning in effect. The southern part of Shelby County, this is until 5 a.m. Let's go back to max one. And again, there's your spot right there. We're focusing on this one spot because this is the only tornado warning in effect for any part of our end of the state right now. The tornado warning for southern Shelby County. And the velocity signature is not really overwhelming, but it's still enough for the Weather Service to keep this uh, intact. Uh, but again, the, the good news, like Charles said, with that lead uh, tornado warning, the first one that came out, uh, Shelby County, their fire stations on US 280, the Narrows, Mount Laurel, no damage, no reports, nothing. Uh, all the reports we're seeing from those neighborhoods down Dunamut Valley Road reporting no damage so far. So that's great news. Um, again, it's in the middle of the night. We often don't get reports until we get the first light of day. We're about still uh, two hours away from that, but still. Uh, that's a good sign, and uh, we've not heard of any damage on this one, Charles. Uh, I just got a report. I'm, I'm trying to verify it, but uh, maybe a couple of trees down in Highland Lakes. Um, so we're trying to verify that right now. Okay. Um, and again, what's interesting, you, know, you kind of tell by the Twitter traffic, when people are waking up when they go back to bed, uh, a lot of folks were awakened from the uh, Vandiver Fire District. Uh, Vandiver is over there on Alabama Highway 25. No reports of any damage. Uh, no reports of any issues over there, which is just fantastic. So, uh, uh, and again, what, what everybody's saying is that there was definite rotation within the rain bands with that as it came over some of the Greystone neighborhoods and Highland Lakes, but uh, just not seeing a whole lot of damage. Um, there's a report right off 280 in Mountain Brook. No issues except for heavy rain. The power is still on. Uh, yeah, the Brock Point, that's the name of the new subdivision, the, the Brock property over there. Uh, they are good, and there's no damage in Brock Point. Brock Point is on the north side of County Road 41. Shoal Creek is on the south side of uh, 41. Um, and uh, it looks like everybody's got power. Uh, here's a report from the farms, Greystone Farms. Uh, Lots of wind, debris, and limbs on the streets and yards, but no damage. There is a report of damage in Highland Lakes of trees down, like you say, Charles. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's the, the first one I've seen of that. Uh, this is a tree down on a deck, um, so that's, that's all I'm getting there. So maybe some minor structural damage there. And... Uh, all is good in Westover right now. Of course, we've got this second tornado. It looked like that the tornado warning's been canceled. They, they pulled it for the south, southern storm, too. I see it off the board here. Hmm. And that's... Um, has it gone through yet? Interesting. Yeah, I, I don't see a, the official word that they've canceled that, but... Uh, uh, and let me just say some more good news here. I don't here. see that either. Sh Shelby, Bibb, Jefferson, Perry, and Blunt are going to expire at 5 o'clock. So though the Birmingham Metro, the severe weather risk ends at 5 o'clock this morning. That's great. So uh, those counties, Shelby, Bibb, Jefferson, Perry, and Blunt, they will fall off the tornado watch at 5 o'clock this morning. Uh, the watch continues for areas on to the east. Let's go to uh, WEX 05. Let me show you the storm coming through Columbiana. This is representative of strong straight line winds. This could knock down a few trees. Yeah, they, so, they did cancel it. Oh, they did? Okay. Yeah, yeah they just finally did, went you know. through. All right, cancel the tornado warning. All right, th that's not a tornado signature. I mean, yeah. uh, you know, that's not a tornado signature. This is maybe representing some strong gusty winds. So, again, within that Boeing segment, you might see some strong straight line winds, but the tornado warning has been canceled. So all tornado warnings in Shelby and St. Clair counties have been canceled. Let's go back to Max 1. 
Uh, we are now at 436, and here's the radar, and we have no active warnings anywhere in our part of the state, which is great news. Could there be more tornado warnings? Absolutely. That's the reason there's a tornado watch in effect. But again, you can see that uh, the heavier storms are now east of Birmingham, so really, for uh, Jefferson County, the threat of severe weather is ended. Uh, the rain's going to continue, but the risk of severe weather is ended. Jefferson County comes off the tornado watch at 5. Still a risk for eastern Shelby County down here, eastern and southern Shelby County. Uh, but those storms should be out fairly soon. All of this is moving over here toward East Alabama. If you're in Ashland, Lineville, Talladega, Sylacauga, Anniston, Sachs, Gadsden, Cedar Bluff. You'll have showers and thunderstorms. The heavier ones coming in here this morning. This is thankfully a time when the instability values are fairly low, uh, and that's good. Uh, but still, we could see a few uh, more reports or a few more warnings. No damage at my house, which is always good news. <laughs> <laughs> Proud well, of my wife. Tree, she, she, tree she, down blocking I, she got up with that alarm, <laughs> and she went in that tornado safe place, which is a cold, concrete, it's not exactly the kind of decor you want to sit in there for a long time. Yeah. But she got in there. Uh, uh, so. Well, but, that just means she needs to go buy some stuff to decorate. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you want to decorate this place. It's uh, a little bitty. I, I've got a closet full of broken weather radios because I'm never home and my wife doesn't know how to turn it off. So yeah, there you that's go. That's what I've got. Uh, we got a tree down blocking Hugh Daniel Drive uh, near the intersection with Greystone Neighborhood. That was a caller report. That was uh, our assistant news director handed me that. I appreciate that. Just kind of giving a heads up for those of you that might be up and moving in the next couple of hours. Uh, you early risers who like to get up around 5 a.m. So uh, just be aware of that. Um, and uh, I know we've got some trees uh, in spots. Uh, this was uh, in Highland Lakes, yes, a uh, tree down, um, a couple of trees down, a tree on the roof in Highland Lakes, uh, a deck damaged by a tree in Highland Lakes, so that is verified uh, now at this point. So, yeah, definitely uh, some damage. We'll see how that, um, if we can find any more of that uh, coming out of the Highland Lakes area. And that was really one or two scans as it moved over the Highland Lakes neighborhood is where it was at its most intense. And then it kind of dissipated, and we had to wait for uh, the Weather Service to cancel that warning. So hopefully it's not too terribly bad. <clears throat> All right, so it's 4.38. I'm uh, James Spann with uh, Charles Daniel. And we are in the process of working an all-night severe weather situation here. But again, the good news at this point, we have no warnings in effect. We had two warnings, two different warnings for parts of Shelby County. Uh, one north, one south. Both of those have been canceled. So we have no active warnings on the board, just a big old mass of rain. And again, these storms are advancing to the east. This batch of storms, there's no chance of any severe weather. This is the concern right in through here, and that's going to be rolling into uh, East Alabama in coming hours. So again, if you are uh, east of Birmingham, you still have a tornado watch. Now, for a lot of the counties, the Birmingham Metro, the tornado watch will be dropped at 5 o'clock. That's in about uh, 20 minutes from now. You're going to see a lot of counties drop off in through here. And as it is now, we've got the western part of the state. You're done with severe weather. No chance of any additional severe storms. Uh, but we still got the chance of severe weather on to the east, and we'll keep a close eye on these storms. But again, the good news at this moment, we have no active tornado warnings in effect, which is uh, great news. Um, let's see here. We're going to learn to stop saying that one day. Yeah, because every time we <laughs> say that, that's when a tornado warning pops up. Uh, let's take WEX05 full screen, if we can. Uh, this is going to be little uh, tree limb that's down in Highland Lakes. Uh, and if you can't see WEX05, let me know. There we go. Um, again, that's uh, another picture here from Highland Lakes. And, uh, you know, the problem is it's just so dark and the weather's so bad it's pouring rain, but there's a tree down that's in uh, Highland Lakes in that shot as well. And uh, here's a... It says the, the weather in Highland Lakes was bad enough to make this guy take cover. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't blame him. Get in from this stuff. Yeah. All right, let's go back to Max 1 behind me. Uh, it is now 440 on Sunday morning. This is Palm Sunday morning. Uh, James Spann with Charles Daniel. We have Megan Thomas and Brian Peters out in the field. We've been here uh, for a long time. We'll stay here until we until everything kind of settles down. And things have really settled down. Now, the truth is we have no warnings in effect now. If you are in... Uh, Shelby County, you probably were awakened by your weather radio or your WIA, your wireless emergency alerts. 
uh, as we had two tornado warning polygons, those circulations have totally dissipated now. So as you can see, we have no active warnings in effect for any part of uh, at least our end of the state. Uh, just a big old massive rain and thunderstorms, which is good. And as the storms continue advancing to the east, the watch will be cleared for counties uh, on the western side of the big rain of massive rain and storms. So that's, uh, that's great news. But if you're in Shelby County, you can go back to bed. Um, and again, uh, if you have your wireless emergency alerts enabled or your weather radio, if there is another warning, that should wake you back up. But for some people, it's almost time to wake up. Every morning I wake up at 4.52, so I'm 10 minutes away from my usual alarm <laughs> clock time here. Um, uh, the last time I slept good was in 1973. Uh, way before Charles was born. I was in high school and I started, I, I took a job at a radio way. station. Yeah. <laughs> Not that way. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah. But again, in terms of what damage overnight, the, the worst damage uh, came in northeastern Mississippi. Um, a little community in Monroe County, Mississippi. Monroe County, Mississippi is this one right here near Aberdeen. Uh, it took a pretty rough hit, a little place called Hamilton, Mississippi, not Alabama, and at least five people were killed. Some are missing, a lot of people injured, and there's a lot of damage there. And once we get the first light of day, we'll know more about that. But let's check in with Brian Peters and Megan Thomas. Brian, hey. where are you at? Hey, James, we're on 459, and I'd like to point out that the, uh, the overhead signs are still showing the tornado warning for Jefferson County, even though it has... Uh, has been canceled. Uh, just a point of interest that if people are traveling, they should know that that warning has been canceled. Okay, wow. Um, Brian, who initiates those messages? Do you know? That's, that's interesting. Uh, uh, I do not know directly, no. I, uh, I know there's a special group that does that, yes. Uh, and by the way, while we're watching Brian's feed, I, I do have some unconfirmed damage reports on uh, US 280 around North Shelby Baptist Church. Um, and again, that would be with that storm that came through uh, Highland Lakes earlier this morning. Uh, but Brian, again, uh, you, you, you came through Tuscaloosa County. We, we watched a TDS come yep. through Southeast Tuscaloosa County and you went through that whole area and you really couldn't find much more than down trees and you think that was straight line winds. That's what it appears to me. Uh, you know, when you have a strong straight line wind, you, you tend to get these small little ends of twigs that are broken off and a lot of leaves. I saw that in several locations. Um, the trees, the two trees that we saw that were downed across highways that took down power lines, uh, those trees were single trees. There were not large numbers of trees. So it, it's almost as if these, uh, these rotations we're seeing on radar are just not getting all the way down to the ground, and yet at the same time, we're getting TDSs, we're getting debris that's being lofted, which I would think with straight line winds would be likely to be just small leaves and things, which would still show up as a TDS. I mean, so it, there, there is an explanation there, but maybe in the daylight, they'll find a path, James. Okay, Brian, uh, thanks, and appreciate all your work uh, this morning. Got one more note. Again, we're starting to see some scattered damage reports with that first tornado warning. Report of a couple of large trees down in the Greystone Cove neighborhood. That's along Shelby County 41, just down from Highland Lakes and near Mount Laurel. Uh, and they still have power. That was uh, from earlier this morning. So, again, uh, uh, there's been some reports of some downed trees. But for most people, it seems like they came through that uh, uh, unscathed here. But, again, if you're just joining us, we have no warnings in effect. Uh, none whatsoever. Uh, we have uh, heavier showers and thunderstorms coming through eastern Shelby County, up into parts of St. Clair County. There is no evidence of any rotation in through here. And that's the reason we have no warnings in effect. Earlier, we had two warnings for Shelby County, one for the northern part, one for the southern part. Uh, those are pretty much over. Let's animate this and we'll kind of watch the progression of the rain coming through the state. Uh, this batch of storms came into West Alabama about 11 o'clock last night and that's been moving steadily eastward. The individual storms are racing north-northeast, the line itself slowly moving east, and uh, we're at a time where the instability values are fairly low. We're very fortunate here if this happened to be 
uh, 4 46 in the afternoon, this could be a whole different situation with temperatures up in the low 80s and uh, uh, you know better instability values. But again, uh, it's just kind of a lull here at this point, which is good. And I, and I think this worked out pretty well for those severe weather risks. If, if you watched uh, the stuff we did today from the Storm Prediction Center showing those risks, they had the enhanced risk over far west Alabama where we had that big tornado in Monroe County, Mississippi. And they've also got, they had an enhanced risk over northeast Alabama for later today. That might not verify as these storms are moving so rapidly, Charles. I mean, these things are just Yeah, the, the flying, idea is man. that these were going to last until 11 or 12, uh, you know, noon today. And we, we really thought in the beginning that these might uh, last from, from 2 a.m. until 2 p.m. Of course, we narrowed that down over the last few days, uh, midnight to about maybe midday today, noon. Uh, but again, these storms are moving very rapidly. Uh, we don't get that opportunity for the sunlight to come out, heat up the Earth's surface, and add to that instability. So I think by daybreak, most of this will be over uh, eastern parts of the state. Got a couple of hours before daybreak, so that moves on. That really helps limit our, uh, I guess, the re-triggering of storms uh, as we go into the mid-morning hours with the sunshine. So that really helps out a lot. Uh, we want these storms to get out of here. Uh, really as fast as possible. As soon as they do, uh, we can kind of chill out and, and, and rest a little bit. We've got a few severe thunderstorm warnings to our north and south, but nothing here. We're, we're not active at the moment. That's fantastic. Um, hope it stays that way, of course, uh, but uh, still some gusty winds, some heavy rain along the initial band. Nothing severe here. We've got a severe thunderstorm warning to our north. There's actually one down to our south may affect uh, the city of Montgomery here coming up, but again, Heavy rain, gusty winds, lots of lightning, and then a second band back to the west. After that clears, uh, then it's over with. It's done, and we can uh, we can rest easy with that one. But again, go back to bed. If the warnings woke you up and you have a way of getting those warnings, you can go back to sleep. It'll wake you up again. If there's another one issued, you can go back to your safe place. We'll be here. Uh, we'll be waiting for these storms all night long. We won't go anywhere until the threat is cleared. And with that, uh, we'll just let uh, you know. We'll just let it go through the rest of the morning. It's still very warm and juicy atmosphere out there. You get out there, you feel it, that negative energy out there. That's not going to change much. Still breezy conditions out ahead of the line on that pressure gradient winds. Uh, but the warnings uh, really have been fairly limited the last few minutes. I'll show you. We've got one to the north. Kind of pick it out there. I don't know if you can see it very well. Uh, and then we've got another one to our south, but no tornado warnings at the moment. So. Um, hope it stays that way. I guess that's the plan for the rest of the night. We hope it stays that way. Seeing a report of uh, numerous trees down in Highland Lakes. Yeah. And again, this is the Highland Lakes in Shelby County. There's a Highland Lake in Blunt County. This is Shelby County where we had that first tornado warning. Uh, so a lot of reports of trees down, but uh, I've not seen any really structural damage reports. We've got some power outages and uh, um, again, uh, so far, so good. Uh, I've, got a, I've got a tree down on a car in Highland Lakes. Okay, yeah, that that would. Uh, that's going to ruin your day. Yeah, that's not good. So again, uh, these are uh, reports from storms that came through Shelby County earlier that prompted that first uh, tornado warning, uh, in effect. But anyway, it's 4:49, 10 minutes away from 5 o'clock, and yeah, the good news. I was looking at the uh, day one convective outlook. In fact, I'll pull that up here so we can kind of look at this uh, together. This is the outlook that uh, begins at 7 a.m. We can, let's take uh, WEX 05. So this is after 7 a.m. Now, if you remember, Charles, yesterday, yeah, we had that enhanced there was an enhanced northeast. risk up here over northeast Alabama, assuming that it would be a very slow progression. But now the enhanced risk is way up here in the Carolinas. And you can see that all we have, and this is after 7 a.m., is just a marginal risk for East Alabama and the standard risk down here for Southeast Alabama. So um, that's a good thing. These things are exiting the state very quickly, and that's a sign that uh, we should be in great shape for the Palm Sunday church services. There was great concern earlier that we'd have severe weather during church hour, uh, especially on the eastern side of the state. But even there, it looks like these storms should be long gone. So let's go back over to uh, Max 1. And uh, we are watching thunderstorms in progress this morning. And they've canceled some of those uh, watches there. Those yeah, the look at that. Out. So here we go. Uh, the tornado watch has been canceled for Blunt, Jefferson, Bibb, Perry counties. 
So the danger is over. And look, let's just call Cullman County. I mean, Cullman <laughs> County is. They're just going to, Huntsville's just going to wait till the top of the hour. Right, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's a weather service jurisdiction thing that we can't control. And it creates mass confusion. In, um, but you understand, if you're in Cullman, you are in our TV market. You should be watching Birmingham television. It has nothing to do with weather service jurisdictions. But for all practical purposes, Coleman County is out. You, you'll be out of this thing at 5 o'clock for sure. But uh, the warning's been pulled for Winston and Blunt and Jefferson. So for the city of Birmingham, the severe weather risk is ended. The, the watch for uh, Shelby County should be uh, pulled at probably 5 o'clock in about 10 minutes from now. Uh, and again, the risk continues on this eastern side of the state. So we have a tornado watch for parts of East Alabama. But again, we stress, if you look at this map, we have no warnings in effect, none for our end of the state. Now down to the south, there's one for Lowndes County, I think. Uh, let's kind of jog that down to the south, Charles. Uh, yeah, we get the, about the only warnings I see are down here in South Alabama. We've got severe thunderstorm warnings for parts of Butler, Crenshaw, Lowndes counties. I spoke to a school in Crenshaw County last week, Charles. Did you? Or actually in uh, Pike County, I'm sorry, Pike County. I was at Goshen down there below Troy. Um, but uh, anyway, that's down there in the southern part of the state and also one up in the northern part. I saw one. Yeah, that's there. that's the only other one. So uh, again, yeah, this is uh, for Lowndes, a small part of Conecca. When you think of Conecca, Charles, what do you think about? Sausage. Sausage. Yeah, <laughs> Every <just>. time. <laughs> uh, Butler County, my old home, and uh, for Crenshaw. Yeah, this, I was at uh, uh, Goshen, which is down here uh, below Troy uh, this past week. But uh, this is for the possibility of strong straight line winds uh, in places like Hainville, Greenville, Chapman, Georgiana, Luverne. And let's go up in northeast Alabama. We'll check that other uh, warning we saw up there. This will be a, a severe thunderstorm warning for looks like a part of uh, Jackson County. Yeah, this is for uh, parts of Jackson County north of Scottsboro. And again, this is no tornado warning. This is a severe thunderstorm warning in effect for extreme northeast Alabama parts of Jackson County. So we have no active tornado warnings in the state at this point, which is certainly very good news. Um, again, watching a lot of folks that have kind of gone out to look around to see if there's damage. And uh, again, we're see just trees down. That seems to be, I've not seen any big structural damage other than the tree down in a car. Of course, yep. that's uh, pretty big structural damage right there. Um, let me show, let's go back to WEX 05 uh, real quick. Uh, this is what it looks like in Monroe County, Mississippi. This is where uh, they've had a rough ride. Uh, this was tough. Crews are working through the night trying to clear roads. We've had at least five people killed in Monroe County, Mississippi overnight. This was about 11, 1130 last night uh, in a small community called Hamilton, Mississippi. Not too far from Aberdeen, and uh, again, uh, that's pretty rough. Uh, this is from Jacob Dickey, who works for uh, Channel 4. He's been uh, monitoring conditions up there uh, throughout the night, and uh, we regret that uh, loss of life. That was the, clearly the scariest tornado signature on radar that we saw during the uh, night tonight. So let's go back to uh, Max <coughs> 01, I should say last night. Um, so... Thunderstorms coming into Birmingham, again, producing some lightning. These storms you see coming in, but the storms coming in from the west are not severe, and they will not be severe. Uh, remember, to be severe, the winds have to be 58 miles per hour or greater, or the hail one inch in diameter or larger. And nothing like that going on really anywhere in our part of the state. Uh, but these storms coming into Birmingham are not severe. Jefferson County is out of the tornado watch. Let's make that perfectly clear. We'll keep an eye on these storms coming into St. Clair County and the Talladega County. But again, they're not severe, not even close to being severe. Uh, one question I saw, somebody said, I live on the second floor of an apartment complex. What do I do to stay safe? So what you do, you go bake a cake. You take it to your neighbor. Yeah. <laughs> you go bake the best cake you can bake. I mean, a really, really good one. Go down and get the good icing and, you know, just slop that stuff on there. And you take that cake down to somebody on the first floor. They are your new best friends <laughs> because you're going to come see them when there's a tornado warning issued because you're fine on the first floor in a small room, but there is no safe place on the second floor or third floor of any apartment complex. There is no safe place. You've got to go down low on that first floor. So uh, bake a cake, take it down to your buddies on the first floor, find somebody, just knock on some doors. Here's a cake. It's yours if you let me come in when there's a tornado warning. 
And uh, I will tell you that has worked uh, many times. Getting reports of winds, uh, gusty winds in through here, a lot of thunder and lightning in East Alabama. But again, we stress uh, we have no severe weather in progress. The only severe storm warning in effect for the northern half of the state is that warning up in Jackson County, and that's it. Uh, for our part of the state down here, it's all good. Rain, yes. Thunder, yep. Lightning, gusty winds, we've got all that. But uh, again, uh, you, you can't warn for just general thunderstorms. Uh, the one thing we have learned is that warning fatigue is real. If people get bombarded with so many warnings, they start not to pay attention to them. They are totally desensitized. And we just, we have to reserve warnings for when storms are actually severe. We have to do this wall-to-wall -wall coverage when storms are actually severe. I'm not going to go on TV just to yak away for three hours when there's nothing going on here, which is basically what we're doing now, but because it's, you know, 4.57 in the morning, we're not cutting off any programming that's you know, all that important. The Ginsu knife commercials. Ginsu knife commercials and the pocket <laughs> fisherman commercials, which I would love a pocket fisherman. Um, but I want that singing bass. The Billy Anybody bass. Could get me one that of those? would be good, yeah. <laughs> um, but the, what's the thing that slices and dices, you know, that thing? That's, uh, I thought that was the Ginsu, wasn't yeah, it? Well, maybe it is the Ginsu. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, w warning fatigue is a, is a real thing. And... Uh, we don't want to be going wall to wall doing continuous weather coverage when there's nothing going on. And, uh, you know, some people say, well, you ought to be on the air every time there's thunder and lightning. No, 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 no. We're not going to do that. Uh, we want to reserve this for when the weather is actually dangerous. And it's been dangerous overnight tonight. And again, we'll stay with this for a little while longer. But again, if we don't have any warnings in the next uh, 10, 15, 20 minutes, we'll kind of phase back into our regular programming here. So things are nice and quiet for the moment. We're just going to ride with it for a little longer here. We went on the air about uh, 11 o'clock last night. Charles, you did the 10 o'clock uh, news. And uh, you, you got, you hadn't slept in, what, six, seven years? Uh, That's, it's yeah. starting to, yeah, look, it's starting <laughs> to show. Yeah. Well, welcome to my world. <laughs> uh, but that's okay. That's and again, Brian and Megan, they've had the tough job. They've been out in the field overnight tonight. And again, working these We're running all over trying to catch working these, these events are just very, very hard. Let's go back to uh, Wex 05 if we can. Uh, this these mm. are trees down on high in Highland Lakes on Knollwood Drive. And again, uh, this is in uh, North Shelby County. This is just off US 280 and off Shelby County Road 41. Uh, this is a large uh, subdivision in uh, North Shelby County. And if you recall, wow. this is where the uh, tornado warning really initiated. The uh, Weather Service in uh, Birmingham issued a tornado warning uh, based on that damage that occurred there at Highland Lakes. And uh, that storm rolled down uh, Alabama 119 and Shelby County 41, coming down through the Greystone neighborhoods, uh, uh, down through uh, Shoal Creek, and uh, ultimately coming into Leeds. And we've not heard of any major damage other than trees down falling onto structures and cars and things like that. But again, that's an example of what it looked like in uh, um, uh, Highland Lakes. We got a report of no damage on 43, which is Forest Lakes and Forest Parks, uh, which is not too far from there. So it seems like the, the, the damage in Shelby County has been fairly limited. And I've not heard of any damage coming from the storms that were down in southern Shelby County. So let's go back to the uh, radar. We are coming up at the top of the hour. It is uh, now 5 a.m. on this Palm Sunday morning. Thanks for watching us. I'm James Spann with Charles Daniel. Uh, we are, we've been here all night tonight working severe storms. And the storms at this point are not severe. Still, we have a tornado watch in effect. So let's go back to our watch warning map and let's see what's happened here. There we go. Cullman County is off the board now. And again... Cullman County is not under a wind advisory, but Blunt and Winston are. Don't blame us. Uh, again, that is a jurisdictional problem within the Weather Service, and we have no control over that, none whatsoever. But I'll tell you, it's going to be windy in Cullman County, just like it is in Blunt and Winston. Um, but we have a wind advisory over here on the western side of the state, but the severe weather threat has ended for Cullman, Blunt, Jefferson, Bibb, and Perry counties. You are out of the tornado watch, no severe weather problems, you're done with this event. Same thing for counties to the west. There's a tornado watch continuing for parts of East Alabama. Uh, this would include places like Pell City, Asheville, Center, Gadsden, Anniston, Heflin, Ashland, Lineville, Talladega, Sylacauga, Roanoke, Rockford, Alexander City, Clanton, Jemison, all the counties here in yellow. But as the storms continue progressing to the east, these counties will be cleared and really you know, I'd say this whole party is almost going to be over, Charles, by 
you know, six, seven o'clock this morning. This is not going to be a long day. Yeah, I think it'll I think it'll wind down pretty quickly. That's that's really good news for us. Uh, you know, like we talked about earlier, the fact that we don't get that sunshine out long enough to reinitiate some storms and add to the instability. So that really helps us out and that helps those out who are going to those Palm Sunday services. So uh, good news. I think a couple more hours. Yeah, and I think we're good. Uh, but very happy about that. Trees down, we can handle that. We can handle some damage. Um, no loss of life. I'll say this, though. The storms we saw back in Mississippi, James, when we started this at 11 o'clock uh, last night, I was uh, starting to get a little worried. That was one of the most intense radar signatures we've seen in a long, long time over in Mississippi. And I was really worried that, uh, you know, that turned into a night like that for us. But we kind of got lucky. So, for you guys at home, think about that thing. Just count your lucky stars that it wasn't as bad as it was back over in Mississippi and what they're dealing with. Uh, loss of life and uh, major damage there uh, north of Columbus Air Force Base. So we got lucky with that. It could have been much, much worse. All right, I agree with that. It's 502 and again, uh, take Wexo 5 real quick. I think this is the thing I wanted, Charles. Uh, this thing right here. Th th this is the <laughs> slap chop. The slap chop. <laughs> See, if, if we ever get out of the weather business, we could we could be like this guy right down here. I mean, uh, or Brian Peters could do that job. Brian, you you could sell the uh, <laughs> the slap chop. So, all right, enough of that. Uh, let's go back to Wex uh, 05. We, you can tell we haven't Sa slept. Sales just launched like crazy yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we, we don't we're not going to do infomercials here. I want the uh, set it. I want that little set it and forget yeah. it oven. Um, I, I need to make a cameo. Go. Go. D just so people know, there is really somebody out there driving the chaser. <laughs> right, wait, get, wait, yeah. get, get, over, get over here. Get over here. <laughs> so uh, what would you see, Brian? Well, basically, um, th this is a quandary here as to how we have such good rotations that are so solid. Uh, and I know we're not at the ground, but, you right. know, it's, it's close to the ground. Right. And we, we get TDSs, the, the debris signatures, and yet down there by Vance and down towards uh, Duncanville and uh, uh, Hagler, Hagler uh, evidence is that it was straight line win. Wow. And so it, it's a real quandary uh, to have such good signatures and yet not get some, so something, there was something in the atmosphere, I'm not sure what, missing that didn't allow those circulations to get all the way down. We'll figure it out. Well, thanks, Brian. Great yep. work. Thanks, sir. Thank you, sir. He's a real guy. See, I mean, he. Um, there you go. Um, yeah, we. Th let me tell you what. There was great concern. If you weren't awake with us, uh, we had the Mercedes plant that was within literally a couple of miles of that tornado. I mean, if it would have jogged to the east, maybe by a couple of miles, uh, it would have gone right over the Mercedes plant. Yeah. And, and they are good. That Mercedes, Honda. They really take safety seriously. They have a great plan. They got their employees in a safe place, but uh, we're thankful there was no damage there. So well, uh, it turns out there may have been some damage. Oh, really? They've got leaks that they didn't have. Oh, okay. Well, uh, yeah, that that would make sense. I mean, that that was pretty scary. We've had that was probably the scariest moment of the morning was when that thing was coming right toward the Mercedes plant and Interstate 5920. But then when you drove down through there, you didn't really see much. So. No. All right. Uh, all right. So again, uh, we are live. We are watching storms. And again, we've got nothing to tell you. And again, we've been here for about 20 minutes with nothing to tell you. And if that's going to hold up here, we're going to go back to regular programming here in just a little bit. Um, again, we don't. Here's the problem, Charles. Whenever we do that, people, you don't care about us. You went back to. Pro no, whenever there's nothing going on, we don't like to interrupt programming. And there is nothing going on here. I mean, absolutely nothing. The minute there's a tornado warning or a severe thunderstorm warning, we'll come back. We'll stay with you for a while, but we, we, the object of the game, we don't like just to sit here to be on television. That's the last thing we want to do. Uh, but again, if you're in East Alabama, there's still a tornado watch. We've not had a warning now for a while. It's been quiet for quite a while. Uh, these storms are producing thunder, lightning, gusty winds, heavy rain. Ahead of the storms, the pressure gradient winds are fairly high. Uh, but there's just been nothing to report here. We've had some down trees and power lines in Shelby County with a couple of uh, thunderstorms, one that initiated around uh, Highland Lakes, which is a neighborhood up on the uh, top of Double Oak Mountain that extends down into the valley there. 
But again, uh, you know, we just haven't had a whole lot to talk about. We've had no major damage across the state. The big problems last night were across the state line, just across the state line in northeastern Mississippi. But again, on their new convective outlook, the uh, weather service after 7 a.m., we have a marginal risk of severe storms. You know, last night there was an enhanced risk in through here, but because these are moving so quickly, they are so way ahead of schedule, the, the enhanced risk is now way over here uh, for parts of western North Carolina, western Virginia, West Virginia. And again, for us, just that marginal risk. I mean, just a low end marginal risk after 7 a.m., uh, so, which is great for the churches. Uh, so for those of you that have Palm Sunday services planned, everything looks fine now. I know that in some cases, churches had to make some plans and adjustments because they were concerned about severe weather. It's just, it's moved on quickly and it's way ahead of schedule. So the bottom line is we think church services will be fine this morning, uh, and which is great. The last thing we needed was some other type church tragedy. We've had, uh, you know, we don't need any more of those. Uh, so uh, everything looks good for the churches and it's just a big old mass of rain this morning with thunder, lightning, and some gusty winds. Uh, there's one little bitty warning up here in the far northern part of the state for Jackson County. That's kind of a marginal situation. Had a few warnings down to the south of Montgomery, but for our end of the state, it's quiet. And there's no doubt that's the that's the winter right there. That's the uh, the line of the part of the line of storms that is producing the most problems uh, coming through parts of Lowndes, Butler, and Crenshaw counties down in South Alabama. This is south of Montgomery. Places like Georgiana, Greenville, Luverne, and Hainville. Uh, these are pretty nasty and they're uh, coming onto I-65 right now. No tornado activity here, but the chance of strong straight line winds. Wouldn't be shocked if we saw maybe a tornado warning in through here, especially over southeast Alabama. This is where there is still fairly unstable over the next few hours. Uh, so again, the tornado threat's not over. There's a tornado watch for that eastern side of the state ahead of these storms. And uh, let's look at these up here. These, these are, this is this little second line coming into uh, Selma. Uh, this line extends from Brent all the way down to uh, a point east of Browns, west of Selma. And that'll be crossing Highway 22. 22 runs from Selma back up to uh, Stanton, Maplesville, and Clanton. And these could produce some strong gusty winds, but there's no warning in effect at this point. Uh, odds of winds gusting over 58 look fairly small at this point, and that the air has already been worked over by previous storms coming through there. So that's a good thing. Uh, again, heavier rain falling uh, from southern Chilton County down through parts of uh, Autauga County down to Montgomery. And let's go up to Birmingham. It's just, uh, again, the Birmingham, Jefferson County out of the tornado watch. For Jefferson County, the uh, risk of severe weather has ended. And, of course, points to the west, the rain has ended. Now, a few more additional showers could form later today, but they're not expected to be severe. And just a big mass of light to moderate rain over northeast Alabama this morning with no warnings in effect. So that's a, uh, a very good thing. We got some scattered power outages, I see. Um, but again, it's uh, looking pretty quiet, Charles. Quiet is good. Uh, we got a report of a uh, tree down on Grants Mill Road with uh, uh, around Lake Purdy. Uh, Grants Mill Road runs from Highway 119. That old bridge coming across the lake then uh, goes over to Interstate 20 near uh, Church of the Highlands. So again, uh, we have report of a tree down on Grants Mill Road near the intersection of Highway 119 right around Lake Purdy. And that was at uh, 416 this morning. And we've had a lot of trees blown down with that particular thunderstorm. And again, that did prompt a tornado warning issued by the uh, National Weather Service in Birmingham. And uh, here's, another, here's another interesting report. At 415 this morning, near American Village, a National Weather Service employee reported a tornado. Uh, a tree down on Highway 16 near the quarry. There was a TDS in association with that. That prompted that second tornado warning for the southern part of Shelby County. And uh, that storm came basically right over the Shelby County Airport where the National Weather Service is located. So uh, again, with both of those Shelby County storms, reports of some trees down, but again, uh, uh, It's, uh, 
it's all good. No injuries in the state. That's the other good thing we have to report. Nobody injured this morning. But again, uh, in Shelby County, most of the tree down reports are coming from uh, Highland Lakes. And uh, but again, we've heard of no reports of any injuries in through there. All right, 511. We're going to stay with this for a few more minutes. And understand we've been on TV for a long time with no warnings and uh, we're going to go back to regular programming here very shortly because there's just nothing to show you here. Somebody go wake up the master control operator. That's right. Yeah. That's right. We want to thank our crew back in the back. I, I think we had an actual change of crew in the middle of the uh, uh, event here, but thanks to all that we, we had some folks to come in on their days off uh, in the middle of the night to help us. So thanks to all of our production crew uh, this morning and also in the uh, news department. Uh, a lot of folks have come in as well to help and do didn't even Brian Peters, the man that looks like Colonel Sanders <laughs> uh, for his help. Uh, Brian, we're getting too old for this, man. We're we supposed to be staying up all night anymore. I, I don't think we're supposed no, to do this. No, no. absolutely not. No. Uh, we've also got a report of trees down on Hugh Daniel Drive. Uh, and, and again, that correlates with the uh, Highland Lakes damage. Hugh Daniel Drive runs from 280 over Double Oak Mountain down to Shelby County 41. Uh, kind of cuts uh, past Greystone, then comes down through Greystone Farms uh, and uh, runs down to 41 and then North Lake at Greystone. But there's reports of trees down and through there. But for everybody else, it's just raining early this morning at 512. So again, there's your radar. Pick out your home county. And by the way, one problem we have learned People can't find their house on a map. Do we need to talk here for a minute? How about a fireside chat? I have no fire here. Um, no, but this subject does get you spurred. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and, and listen, we don't expect people to be geographers or radar meteorologists. We really don't. We understand. It's like there's a lot of things I'm not good at, a lot. But during severe weather, what do we use? Maps all night. You know, we just can't show you much severe weather at night, so we wind up using maps. And we have learned that a large percentage of people in our state, in many states, cannot find their house on a map. If I were to give you a blank map with no labels, no highways, just county lines and state lines, could you draw a dot within 50 miles of your house? And we've seen some studies that show about 85% of the population cannot do that. So this, this makes sense because you post a really easy to use map, uh, easy to read map on social media in the first 80 questions. What about Jasper? What about East Aboga? What about Clanton? What about Center? What about Gadsden? What about Fayette? What about Vernon? What about Millport? What about Rockford? What about Silicaga? What about Wadawi? What about, what about, what about? And we've learned that people can't not understand maps. And I understand with phones, it's cool. You tell the phone, hey, I want to go to wherever, and it just gives you turn by turn directions. But you need some basic map skills to help us communicate so critical severe weather information. It would really help if you could identify the county that you live in and the counties adjacent to you. And it really doesn't take that much. I learned this stuff in fourth grade. I mean, when I was in fourth grade, we did Alabama geography, Alabama history. I love fourth grade. It was a great grade. Uh, but you don't learn all of them, but just learn the county that you're in and the ones that surround that. And it would really, I think, help us all during times of severe weather because we can't give individual briefings. I'll probably, I bet you, Brian, I've got a thousand requests for individual briefings since this I won't started. Take that bet. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I can't do that because I'm on television, but part of it is the fact that they just can't understand maps. And so, that would be a big help. So that's the end of my fireside chat for tonight. I could go on and on, but I'm not. That's it for this evening. I'm not going to talk about sirens. We've already touched on that, uh, but never rely on them. But I, I think a lot of people were awakened by wireless emergency alerts when our, the warnings went off here uh, and, and by weather radios. So that was encouraging because the, the social media traffic spiked when the Shelby County warnings came out. So that was good that a lot of folks were awakened and folks did the right thing. They got their kids up. They got into a safe place. That is a marvelous thing. We're thankful there wasn't that much damage with both of those. But again, there were some trees down. And that is a good rehearsal, if nothing else. And the same thing for churches. It looks like we're going to be fine for the church services. But initially, we thought we might see severe weather in East Alabama during the worship time today. But that was a great exercise in reminding churches they've got to get a weather radio. They have to have a plan on getting people out of the sanctuary into hallways and corridors. So, uh, 
Again, we're going to keep it here until 530. We're going to go about 15 more minutes, and if we don't have any warnings at 530, we're going to go back to uh, regular programming. And uh, let's see here. Let's uh, take WEX 05 if we can, please. Uh, this is going to be a tree down on Shelby County 41 near Shoal Creek. Um, and again, uh, that was during that thunderstorm that came through earlier this morning. Uh, this is from, uh, let's see, about the same place. This is from Sony, our buddy that works in Morning Shift. Um, I don't have an exact location of that, but I would imagine this might be somewhere around uh, Highland Lakes. It's going to re-rack that video one more time. Again, this is, uh, these are folks cutting down some uh, trees. Got the uh, fire department crews there clearing roads. Yeah, that that uh, yeah, it could be Hugh Daniel Drive. And I will say that Highland Lakes uh, is a gated community, so uh, uh, this is probably uh, Hugh Daniel. That would be the uh, either the city of Hoover or uh, Shelby County uh, Fire there helping to clear the uh, tree from uh, Hugh Daniel. And uh, we should mention we have a new warning for our friends down in South Alabama. This is a severe thunderstorm warning for parts of Butler, Conecuh, and Escambia County. So let's go way down south, Charles, for those that might be watching online. And again, you can see this is where the action is right now. This is in far south Alabama. Uh, we have severe thunderstorm warnings uh, in effect for parts of Butler, Conecuh, and Escambia counties. It's this warning right here. This is the new one. This is uh, Evergreen. This is Chapman down in South Butler County. You know who's from South Butler County, Charles? Hank Williams. And nobody cares about that little trivia fact, but I just thought I'd throw that out there. I, I'm from Butler County. I, uh, my summers were spent right here as a little boy. In Ch I grew up in the woods of Butler County, Alabama. And uh, in those summer days, we didn't have phones or Xboxes. We go play in the woods. And uh, my granny lived in a house in Chapman, a company town. There's a big uh, lumber operation right there, and uh, very, very fond memories of that. In fact, I could tell you stories about the woods of South Butler County that I will not <laughs> this morning. Not while we're on a mic. No. Uh, <laughs> but again, this is Connecticut County. This is Escambia County. That's Butler County. So the Weather Service in Mobile kind of blanketing that line of storms down in South Alabama for the possibility of strong, damaging straight-line winds. Uh, and again, that's... Uh, basically lined up from near Bruton all the way up to Greenville and up into uh, Lowndes County, parts of Crenshaw County under a warning as well. And it seems like this might be the place where the better instability will be and the better chance of any severe weather for the next uh, several hours down and through here. So again, that's severe thunderstorm warnings in effect for parts of South Alabama. That's Interstate 65 right there. But let's go back up this way and not a warning to show you for the northern half of the state, which is a good thing. So we're going to stay here until 5... I said 515, 530. We're going to go to rate for, All right. uh, that's in 10 minutes. Uh, so for everybody's uh, planning here in the building at 530, we go back to a regular programming. Let's pop the watch box back on here, Charles, the watches, and just to show you what's been cleared out. The tornado watch has been canceled for Blunt, Jefferson, Bibb, Perry, and Coleman, and all counties back off to the west. It continues in effect for East Alabama. Uh, and again, we're going to watch these storms carefully just to see if anything happens. We'll go back to the radar. And uh, let me just address this. People are going to say, you ignore us in East Alabama. No, we, we're on TV when we have active warnings. And trust me, every single time there's been a tornado warning for some place in East Alabama, we've been on television. We don't discriminate. It doesn't matter. But we don't like to stay on TV when there's nothing happening. And that's where we have been for about the past hour. And uh, again, we're kind of in a lull of activity. The instability values are as low as they will be for the next hour or two. We're not going anywhere. But if there is a warning, we'll come right back on the air. But we just don't like to stay on the air and cover programming for no reason. And there's really no reason for weather people to be on the air right now. So again, uh, the severe weather risk is over from Birmingham West. We have a tornado watch for the eastern side of the state. But the truth is there's just a large rain mass in place. And that typically creates an environment that's not really favorable for a lot of severe weather. And understand, there could be. We can't rule that out. 
but in a case like this, that's not really a classic setup for severe storms. So just a rainy morning for East Alabama. The better chance of severe storms most likely over the southeastern part of the state. That's where we have the better instability values and that's where the air has not been worked over. This air over here is just, it's been raining for a while. Uh, but once you get below Interstate 85, that stretch from Interstate 85 on south, places like Dothan and Geneva and Ozark and Troy and Eufaula, that might be the zone of the state where there's a better chance of severe storms uh, later this morning. Uh, but as always, we'll keep a close eye on things. We always do. We have not slept in a long time. The uh, major issue across the southeastern states occurred last night um, around 11 o'clock. This is when we had at least five fatalities in a small community called Hamilton, Mississippi, not Alabama, Mississippi, and Monroe County. Others were injured, major damage there. It was uh, overwhelming for the folks in the community. They had to have a lot of help come in from different parts of uh, Monroe County. And uh, that was, by the way, that picture was Hugh Daniel Drive and that was Hoover. That yeah. was uh, from Station 8. Uh, those guys are great. Uh, and let's see if I can show a couple of other things really quick here. Uh, this is, uh, check this out. This is a tree down in Liberty Park near the fire station there. Uh, and again, this happened uh, this morning as those storms were passing through. This was much earlier this morning. Those storms had greatly weakened. And again, we have no severe weather in progress now. So let's go back to Max 1. Uh, we're at 522. In about eight minutes, we'll go back to regular programming. And uh, we are, it, everything is just nice and quiet, which is nice. We have not had nice, quiet conditions now for about, <laughs> what, we, we, all night. We, six we, hours, yeah, six and a yeah. half hours. This yeah. is the first time we've had it. And again, we have been quiet for now for about 45 minutes. So we are very confident that the odds of new warnings are low, not zero, but fairly low. And for those of you in East Alabama, it's just going to be mainly a rainy morning. But still, we'll watch for any sign of storms that try and rotate or try and become severe. But this big rain mass more than likely will kind of keep things nice and stable and prevent any major additional issues this morning. The main concern is going to be down there in the southeastern part of the state again, south of Interstate 85, east of Interstate 65. That's going to be the spot to watch uh, earlier this morning where severe storms are in progress down there below Montgomery. And again, what you see right here, that's not severe. We don't expect any severe issues with that. In fact, those counties have been cleared from the tornado watch over there. So uh, 523. And uh, we don't have the number of power outages at this point. Here's another uh, note here from the Weather Service. Uh, they have a report of trees down blocking Hugh Daniel Drive. We saw the uh, folks from Hoover F Fire Station 8 clearing those trees. Yeah. This is uh, on Hugh Daniel Drive near Greystone Farms. Trees are also down on Milner Way in Greystone Farms. And that was in association with... Uh, a severe storm and there was a tornado warning issued about the time all that happened. Um, and again, this is in uh, the northern part of Shelby County. And other than that, it's, it's nice and quiet. Goodness gracious. Let's, let's get it out of here. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> let's, uh, let's move on here. The, uh, the next event uh, in terms of stronger storms will come later in the week, probably uh, Thursday or Thursday night. We'll, uh, once we get this out of the way, we can focus on that next one. But again, I, I, one thing I've said before all night I want to stress, th this is April in Alabama. I actually got a tweet from somebody last night. I said, this shouldn't be happening to us. <laughs> Happens all the what? time. <laughs> it's April. <laughs> I mean, so she, she said, something has changed here. No, it hasn't. I mean, th th this is tornado season. We, we have always had tornado threats in March, April, May. We will always have them in March, April, May. And that's what I wrote over and over yesterday. Th this is common. We expect this. Have a way of getting the warnings. Know where you're going. We'll get through the night just fine. And we got through the night just fine. Unfortunately, we did have loss of life in northeastern Mississippi. And uh, based on the damage that we saw that could be a pretty significant tornado. The, the weather service in Memphis will send a team in there. Monroe County, Mississippi is, is in the Memphis 
National Weather Service County warning area. So the Weather Service in Memphis will send a team down to Monroe County this morning and to assess the damage and, and rate that storm. And uh, we'll find out later the uh, EF scale number. Just had a note that our friends in West Homewood just lost power. And again, I really, yeah, th it's, you know, sometimes you can have a branch that goes down in a line or something like that. But again, this is just rain, uh, nothing but rain, nothing severe, uh, a little bit of thunder and lightning, but uh, not even close to being at severe limits. Um, and so again, we are three minutes out now. It's 527. So at 530, we're going to go back to our regular programming here. And uh, if anything else changes, we'll come back on the air. Uh, we're going to be right here this morning. But uh, again, uh, for now, it, uh, we'll plan on doing updates every 30 minutes during the duration of the watch. So we'll be back at the top of the hour at 6 o'clock. And uh, we'll let you know if anything is going on. Uh, uh, but again, it's just nice and quiet back here in the weather office, which is a, uh, which is a good thing. Again, there could be a few showers redeveloping later today along the actual surface front. But... Uh, no additional severe weather is expected. Let's pop on that convective outlook for today, which looks great. This is the day one severe weather outlook from the SPC, the Storm Prediction Center. And the core threat is going to be way northeast of Alabama, uh, around Greenville, South Carolina, up through Virginia, parts of Ohio and Pennsylvania. For our state, just a marginal risk for the eastern counties and the standard slight risk for the southeastern counties. And again, I think that's where the better chance of any severe weather will be this morning. South of Interstate 85, east of Interstate 65. Uh, places like Dothan and Ozark and Geneva and Troy and Eufaula and Phoenix City. Uh, but for the western side of the state, we're done with it. Uh, from Birmingham West, and just a marginal low end threat over here for the eastern side of the state this morning as that uh, batch of rain moves in here. So let's go back to the uh, radar. And we're about two minutes away from going back to programming. And it's just a big mass of rain. Like I said, we don't want to sit here for three hours and tell you it's raining. It's, it's not what we do here. Uh, <laughs> it's just, it doesn't work for me. I mean, it's, uh, if we stay on the air when it's raining for hours and hours and hours, when the weather's serious, nobody would pay attention to us. Ah, oh, it's those goobers. They're on TV every time it rains. Uh, we, we want you to see us goobers when the weather's dangerous, uh, doing wall-to-wall -wall programming like this. And so we've been on here for about an hour with no warnings, just kind of watching things. And we'll phase this back and go back to regular programming here and watch it in the office. And again, we'll, we'll come back at the top of the hour at 6 o'clock with an update and uh, just keep you updated until the storms exit the state uh, later this morning. But again, some of you getting thunder, lightning, gusty winds, some heavy rain. But generally speaking, just a big mass of rain across the state this morning. The rain has ended for the western side of the state, and the rain will gradually end from west to east over the next uh, couple of hours or so. So again, uh, Brian, thank you for being out in the field. Fine job, as always, uh, keeping the chaser out of the ditch. Charles, thanks for not uh, being here with no sleep. The man is a miracle worker. <laughs> And to our production crew back in the back that uh, came in in the middle of the night on a Saturday night to uh, get us on the air. And to our friends in the news department for their uh, assistance as well. We got Stephen Gallion here, our assistant news director. We got one of the big bosses here. So, th Stephen, thanks for coming in. And uh, for those folks out in the field working, they've got the easiest, uh, we've got the easiest job in the world in this dry, comfortable studio. The hard part's out there in the field. So, uh, thank you guys for watching. We're coming up on 5.30. Uh, we will be monitoring the weather very carefully. Nothing going on right now. We'll see you at the top of the hour at 6 o'clock with the next weather update. On behalf of the entire weather team, I'm James Spann. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in 30 minutes.